All right. You ready? I'm always ready. I was born ready. Podcast number 11. I'm Joel. This is Eric. So Beckman Unleashed Podcast. Beckman Unleashed Podcast number 11. So here's here's what I... I have a question. For me? For you and for the uh, listeners of this podcast. I want you and the listeners to make something make sense that does not make any sense to me. Okay? okay. All right. And I don't know what you're going to say. The video that went... We had a video go big last week. It was Prince pushed too far video. It was from two months ago. Cattle dog tries to bite Prince. Prince turns around and gets mad at the cattle dog and doesn't hurt the cattle dog. The amount of comments, I'm going to read them. I'm going to read them right now. I'm going to go through them. It's like 10% of the comments, maybe 5%. It's, it's too high of a negative comment on this certain thread for me to disregard. 10% is a lot. I can't, I, I, I can't say, oh, these people don't know anything. They don't get it. It's too True. high. But 10% of people are generally pretty stupid. Okay, that's a good point. And maybe that's the answer. But I okay. need to, you need to make it make sense to me because it doesn't. I have theories. Okay. So here's, that's the video. I'm going to read it to you. The, the cattle dog has a muzzle on. You've seen my videos. Muzzle, dog tries to bite Prince in a muzzle. Prince gets mad at the dog. Dog is better at the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's a good formula. All right. Next time, Try it fair with the muzzle off. You got it all wrong, buddy. Why not muzzle both animals for that exercise? Why don't we muzzle the nice dog? Uh, okay. Um, the stupid thing is people believe you're an expert. Okay. That was a general. They don't like me. That didn't have anything to do with the muzzle. Um, the dog constantly trying to remove the muzzle. If removed, it would try to attack again. Require a lot more training. That is an argument. That I'm going to get into the teaching portion, portion, portion of this podcast, which is the muzzle isn't what most people think it is to a dog. You know what a muzzle does. They don't know what a muzzle does. They think they have something annoying kind of on their nose. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't understand. And that actually goes to the heart of this. There's only one problem here. It unfair. <laughs> the your dog doesn't have something on her mouth. Okay. Seeing a pattern here. You're seeing a pattern. Yeah. All right. You let your dog bite a dog that's muzzled really cool, like tying a boxer's hands together. So the cow, this is a different one. So the cattle dog with a muzzle on is not allowed to bite your dog, <laughs> but it's fine for your dog to bite the cattle dog. It's odd how in all your videos, it's fine. Oh, so this is not a random so, yeah, person. see more than one. So we think a, a lot of the folks, it's going out to the world. Because when a video gets big, it gets way out of our universe, right? Yeah. It goes to non-dog people, goes to everybody. Mm -hmm. But this is our person. Fine for your dog to do something. But when another dog does it, it is bad behavior. <laughs> when has Prince ever just ran up to a dog and tried to bite it? <laughs> Teach what? Dog has a muzzle on. That was weak. Okay. You guys see a theme there? All right. Here's my theories. I'm on fire. Here's my theories. The, okay. My theories are, and there, there's differences in those comments. They're not all the same comments. This goes to different parts of the world. YouTube jumps around and it goes, hey, we're going to go to um, Argentina. And then it's like, we're going to go to the Middle East. So I think there could be some regional differences here. But I think partly they want a dogfight. I'm okay. These are theories. I actually don't know. Okay. They want, here's my theories. You they tell me what you think. They want to watch a fair dog fight. They want to watch a fair dog fight. They want to see a dog fight. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know. I don't get it. Okay. They don't understand the method. Clearly they don't understand the method. Maybe that's it then. They just simply don't understand the method. Okay. Um, Okay, those are my only two. They things. don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, but that's the easy answer. Yeah, the easy answer. That's easy. It's easy to say they don't. There's too many of these comments, and I didn't read them all. I read a lot of them for us to just go. Ah, they don't know what they're talking about. There's too many. Do you want me to make this make sense for you? That's my the thing is make it make sense, and commenters and the viewers, please make it make sense because I I true. If you don't like the tail cropping near docking of prints, which I get hate for, I understand. If you don't like that I worked with killer whales at SeaWorld, I understand. If like I get where I get heat, I get it. I don't understand this. So the video, it's called Push Too Far. And we're referring to Prince, your dog training dog. 
right, who trains other dogs, yes, was pushed too far because he was minding his own business and a cattle got dog basically runs up on him like he's going to bite him in the back of the leg when Prince wasn't ready. And he had a muzzle on the cattle And Prince dog. doesn't like to be attacked. Yeah, just like you don't like to be attacked. Yeah, like no one likes to be attacked. Just yeah. like you don't like to be attacked in the comments. Same type of deal. Yeah. They're like little cattle dogs trying to bite you in the back of the leg. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, and we're going <laughs> to smack them down today. Yeah, so my issue is, okay, we've talked in the past about how people see your videos. It could be some random kid watching YouTube in his basement and he sees it and he's, yes. like you're saying, expecting to see a fight. And unfortunately for him, one of the dogs is muzzled, right? But what they don't understand is you are not attempting to have a fight on your facility. They don't get that. They don't understand that. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So they don't so they get it. think, but they don't. There's context. I they don't just fast forward to the bad parts. I don't think they have to hear me talking. And in this video, I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And like, I explain everything. Do they not hear that explanation? I mean, the reason for, for the people that highly unlikely are not our pod, the people that actually love this podcast, uh, as we refer to them, the pod, as they refer to themselves, there is no way that, you know, our, our own pod would think that, you know, Prince wants to be bitten, that Prince is dangerous to other dogs. The Prince right? is macho. They yeah. I don't believe that. I mean. That I am macho. But you don't muzzle a dog that doesn't bite people. Or dogs. dogs. Never. He didn't even bite that dog. He might have like mouthed him. Yeah, he didn't bite him. He didn't bite him. There was no damage to that dog other than his pride. Yeah, but we're no closer to making it make sense than we were when we started this segment. But you are trying to take people that don't understand what you do for a living, more or less. Maybe but it's that one person. Did. I don't mean to argue with you. It's explained in the video. It's like a 10 minute video. It's a six minute video You're... where I explain it, then I show it, then they type their comment. Okay. So, YouTube analytics quiz for you. If we have a 12 minute video, how, what's the average watch time? Four. Okay. So, they're probably not watching the full video. Okay. That's, they might not be that's... watching more than 30 seconds of that video. And then they're commenting? Yeah. Hmm. That could be it. That could be it. But the one, the one comment, the person sees all my videos. So I'm going to, I'm going to explain, I'm going to, I'm going to give an analogy here. Has yeah. anybody, my commenters or commenters, viewers seen dog daddy? Eric, have you seen dog daddy? Do For you know sure. what dog daddy does? He walks up every video I've ever seen of the guy. <laughs> he walks up the dogs in a muzzle. Usually just like the dogs who attack other dogs in my are usually in a muzzle. Not all. And then we take the muzzle off. Yeah. He grabs the dog while the dog's in a muzzle. The dog tries to bite him and often hits his leg. He does his thing. Then he takes off or doesn't take off the muzzle and the dog is better. Do you know what I do with my dog and dog aggression? We put the dog in the muzzle so everyone's safe, just like dog daddy puts the dog in muzzle so everyone's safe. Gets the dog better, then pops the muzzle off. But nobody, I don't think, has the visceral reaction to watch dog daddy or me when I use a dog, human aggression, not dog aggression, I use a mu I use a muzzle so the dog doesn't bite me or somebody else. We get the dog better, then we take the muzzle off. Why aren't they saying to me or dog daddy, when we have a human, a human bite thing, why aren't they going, take the muzzle off between dog daddy between you and the dog, make this a fair fight? It's the exact same thing. But they're saying make it a fair fight. That's what they're saying. They're we don't want a fight at all. No, we don't. No, that's that's my point. Dog, the, it's the same, right? The dog no, but, daddy example and the prince example. Act like prince is dog daddy. They're yeah. both potentially dog daddy's nice, prince is nice. The other dog is trying to attack dog daddy or prince. The attack, it keeps everyone safe until the correction can be made. Then the dog is better after the correction is made. But nobody's going, why don't you take the muzzle off so it can bite you, Joel or Dog Daddy. But they're saying, take the muzzle off so it can bite Prince. And I don't get it. That's where I just think. Yeah, you go, why would I want it to bite my dog? But they don't get it. And I my don't My dog get has it. a job. He trains other dogs. I yeah. don't want him to get bit. Ever. So, oh, so what's, the, what's the answer? How, so what how's, you're saying, how, 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 here's where they're going astray. Is So somebody breaks into somebody's home, right? They want to rob something from someone's house. So the guy wakes up, grabs something from his nightstand, 
goes out to see what the fuss is about. And then the robber goes, Hey, what's up? Let's make it a fair fight. He goes, <laughs> you're in my house. I don't want a fair fight. It's a great point. We're not trying to fight here, buddy. You're in my you're house. You're in the wrong. Yeah. You're on my Clearly. video. This, that's, a, this, that's, that's the same. So what are, what is this? What the dog constantly trying? I don't, the stupid thing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Why not muzzle both animals for that exercise? Because Prince doesn't bite mark. anybody. He wants to know why we're not muzzling both animals. Why are we not muzzled? Yeah. Because we don't bite people. Yeah, we don't attack people. Okay. Eric Vaughn Staffen Signorance 4805. Why not muzzle both animals? All right, Eric Vaughn Staffen. Because Prince won't bite anybody. He doesn't bite the because dogs. Prince is at his own home. Because there's he many lives reasons. There. Yeah, it's it doesn't seem that tough, Eric. Okay, Robotron OG, you got it all wrong, buddy. Okay, all right. You next it, time, a lot wrong, try right? it fair with the muzzle off. There's the dog that they want. They want to fight. Try it fair. What? Why, it why fair. would we make it fair? Shoot a fair one. They say. That's a term. Yeah, shoot a fair one. I've yeah. never heard that. It's like a box. It's like going and fighting in the street or something. Never heard it. Yeah. Dewey, Dewey, Nellick, 4855. Try it fair. Now, I wouldn't start this podcast with focusing on a one a thread of comments that are at 1%. This is 10% of the comment. Of the 90% are good, 10% have this theme, maybe 5%. That's a lot. So this, this, this met. How you about know why, this though? is just a new method too? I'm going to help you. No understand. one else does this. Oh, it you just are. came to me. Th thank you for helping me. You okay. have not helped me to this point. I know. Really, I did yell. So let me, yeah, let me get to the second mad. part. So the reason that you're getting this visceral response, I remembered it while you were talking, is because the dog. And this is what two months ago that this video came out. Two months. Okay, but I remember this. So the dog goes at Prince. Prince turns around and basically overwhelms the dog. And there, we also did, I think I did, or I helped do a short from that, which was the dog judge jujitsu, right? Well, he does the jujitsu and he basically yeah. kind of overwhelms him and pushes yeah, yeah. him into the ground. Yes. That's fine. But then the dog tries to get away and he's jumping up over that like uh, yeah. block wall and he's like all over the place, like yeah. running for it's dear life. Rough. And so I think they see that. And they're like, feel like the dog was helpless. The point is, is that it You're, still presupposes that you wanted the dogs to fight, which you did not. If yeah. he would have just not ran up on Prince, nothing would have happened. I know. He did the F around right. and find out chart. All right. I need, I need answers from the viewers, not Eric, because I'm not getting any answers from Eric. I thought those were fantastic answers. But Oh, so your last one was the dog looked helpless at a moment into it. Did they forget when the dog tried to bite the heck out of a dog who's sauntering away? Do they think that what the dog should mean? just cruising? Prince is just like cruising away down the thing. And the dog's like runs after him, bites him as hard as he, he can. He thought he was a cow. Yeah. Yeah. Which I get. And that's, that's, that's an argument. But that's mm -hmm. not the argument they're making. Sure. So the dog looked helpless is what you're saying. Yeah, just to fire you up a little bit more. I don't know if you saw this, but the most recent video that was posted on Sunday. Yeah. What was the name of that video? Do you remember? I'll look it up right now. What's up? So there was somebody who pulling came nightmare. In, pulling nightmare. Okay. So it was with the they were basically saying like Joel always attacks or basically goes like overwhelmingly hard, you know, over, you know, a dog being a dog or basic behavior. And mm. I sent you screenshots of it. And I was like, should we leave this thing? Because the, the person continued. I looked at their oh, YouTube yeah. and they had like a bunch of them. They're just like on your channel. Just just every video you're doing trying to trash you. Yeah, you did send me screenshots. I did see that even before you sent me screenshots. So polling nightmare. I mean, I wish we could bring it up right now. They, they the commented bottom, a lot and it. I commented on one of their other comments mm -hmm. and so i didn't want to pull down all their comments because i wanted them to get back to me okay on I, I i commented back to this person and i wanted them to get back to me but yeah the person's somebody said I, so i left it them. up i just don't take down a lot of comments somebody said back to them um why don't you do better 
to them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's go ahead and put it. You that's know, one of the arguments. Go put up a video and do it better, which is like something you would have said. Probably. Yeah. I say that a lot, but I, I don't say that so much anymore. Yeah. All right. Have you ever heard there's like a song? It's a, something, the percentage of people that, that understand is smaller than the percentage that do. No. That's what we're running into here. We're yeah. Into Plus, I a, think it's cultural. It's this channel's worldwide and it gets to a certain segment of the of a country or a region or a cultural area and they're just like feel bad for the dog or don't get it or they're not that smart. I think There's parts what, of the world that aren't that. It might have to do with the amount Maybe. of Red Bull that you drank today. That might also have driven I did, some I of did this have a Red Bull. problem. Like sometimes it makes me think of like allowing something to slide can like eat at you in a way. Um and then sometimes you let stuff slide and it just goes right off your shoulders. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't that worked up for this. You got a little worked up. Yeah. So, okay. So here's what I think. Here's my final thought. And I would like the, the viewers to the pod. help me with this. I'm going to explain the method a little bit. It's preaching to the choir though, mm -hmm. to the pod. They get it. They understand. Animals and people, especially violent behavior, need to be corrected timely and they need the correction to be somewhat severe these people are bringing me this these dogs the, the a correction from me or from the owner on a leash or off a leash is literally 10 percent of what the correction from prince would be the timing from prince is perfect and the the smoke the intensity from prince is usually perfect the timing from us is going to be off and it's not the target. The target turning back towards the dog is the power in it. Mm -hmm. Me or the owner doing something towards the dog timing's off. It's not the, it's not the, the target isn't doing it. So it's the perfect system. And then the muzzle is to keep the dog safe. Who's potentially getting bit. And I guess they just, See, I'm no closer to I'm an gonna answer. Put, I'm going to put this into context for you. I'm no closer. I'm really happy that I figured out how to put this in the proper context. How long ago was this video? Two months. Two months. Um, oh, yeah. I hit this right. This one pushed too far. Let me let me give you a stat that I think will, will show you that you're on the right track. And don't worry about the haters. So let's see I here. I can this Snapple. Who knew they even make Snapple anymore? Uh, do they make Snapple? I didn't know that. Here it is. So just so you know, my friend, since now, that video that came out, you said two months ago, I didn't check the exact date, has given the channel 1,030 subscribers. Oh, uh, that's a lot. So who cares? That's a lot of people that looked at it. They didn't just watch the video and like it. They Hit watched subscribe. the video and were like, I need to follow this guy. All right. A thousand people. That's a lot for one video. That is a lot. That's a lot. There's 18,000 hours of watch time on that. And you had it's some a people. six minute video. It's a short video. Is it only six minutes? I think so. Oh, wow. So anyway. All right. Well, if it's a thousand subs from it, then I guess I don't care. That's 500,000 views. That's I guess amazing. I don't care. Have you looked at the, the like to dislike? Not that it matters too much, but Okay, so like this is behind dislike. the scenes. Behind the scenes to the channel. If you like this channel, you're getting some behind the scenes. So if you look at the average, uh, the channel average for likes versus dislikes, which is crazy high, the average for the channel is 98.0%. This video is 97.7. It's 0.3 less. It's almost exact. Hmm. Interesting. It's barely less than a normal video. It's almost identical. I mean, it's, it's almost identical. 97.7%. That's identical all almost. right so people actually don't dislike the video yeah you have vocal people that all are right. in their mom's basement that are the keyboard warriors all right attacking you all right i feel better you good see yeah. the numbers the numbers uh don't, numbers don't lie they don't lie that's they not anecdotal lie. that's no that's facts that's what we talked about and also it is inside baseball because uh oh. as a lot of you youtuber fans know there's they've removed the information on dislikes have you seen that from the public yeah or from us so they can hit dislike or like but they 
It doesn't oh, show the that. numbers anymore. That happened a while ago. Which I think is really like goofy. years ago. Like three years ago, two years ago. But I, I disagree with it. You like to see, like, everyone yeah. hates this video. If someone has a 1,000 likes and uh, 10,000 dislikes, I'd like to know that. And the reason is because the reason I know that Facebook does not allow that on their, you know how they have the reels where they flip? Um, they don't allow you to do that. And the reason I don't like it is because they'll put something up that's incredibly misleading. That's like, it doesn't, whatever they're saying in the thumbnail or whatever doesn't happen at all. It's completely opposite or it's just totally fake. Yeah. And then everyone's commenting like, this is a totally BS video, right? Right. But there's no way to downvote it or do anything. Right. Frustrating. Frustrating. All right. Are you happy now? Yeah, I'm okay. good. Okay. That was good that we got, we worked that out. Yeah, we worked it out. Yeah. I think cool. once you heard the thousand subs, you're like, oh, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. That's a lot for one video. All publicity is good publicity. Yeah, I say that a lot. Yeah. All that's right. Fine. I'm going to go into apology segment because people like it. We should have multiple parts of our apology segment. We do. We just talk okay. about it throughout the podcast. So okay. um, here's my apology segment from last podcast. I only have one. If any of you thought that Breed of the Week was going to be a good informative <laughs> segment, I want to apologize to you because it has not been. So I apologize to anyone who thought Breed of the Week was going to be awesome and informative. Yeah. Because it is not. Because we just go off on random stuff. First was Roddy's, and then we went into, there was one Rottweiler in the Sopranos, and we then went on the Sopranos rant. And last week I was like, oh, pit bulls. And then I talked about how many people pit bulls kill. And yeah. And then also with pit bulls, if you saw the thumbnail and heard the breed of the week was Pitbull and we're expecting to learn about Pitbulls, <laughs> but really just got You're a bunch of press scenario, <laughs> Kane Corso and Borbel talk, then we apologize to you for that. Yeah. So, so is, that's my apology. Can you week. rectify any transgressions by saying something, something about Pitbulls that maybe someone didn't know or maybe a comment that you saw about Pitbulls? Um, no. It's not looking good. No, the pitbulls. We talked about their bodies. We talked about what they're for. We talked about they give good kisses. They said they're a terrier slash bulldog mix in the comments. There's a lot of that. Yeah, that's kind of it. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, like what you? Oh, you want to know the origin of them? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, the American bulldog got some comments too that it was uh, basically bred from a pit bull, right? I mean, they're all variations of terrier to bulldog yeah 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 right yeah anything with bully in its name you you better be ready if it has bulldog french bulldog pit bull anything with bull in their name the majority of them are a bull that's a reason that's in their name they're they're bull headed they're they're actually hard headed their their heads are thick what's bull headed stubborn did like, I just make like that people. up? Bullheaded? Yeah. Like people. Yeah, they're stubborn and they actually have a hard head. So they, man, I saw this video of like, I don't know what breed it is. A lot of pig hunting, right? Which you, you were in Hawaii. Yeah. And popular. man, these dogs, bro, I saw this one with this, this giant bull and this dog runs in to this giant, it's not a pig, dude. It's a freaking boar, right? Did I say bull? I meant boar, boar hunting. You said a pig, didn't you? Pig, but boar. Poor, and or... and this dog runs in there at a thousand miles per hour and the boar just smacks this guy so hard and he just keeps going, this dog, at this boar. And it's 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 crazy can what I, these dogs do. Can I give your viewers a treat? Yeah. So this is for, not for the faint of heart, but there is a, if you know who Steve Rinella is, he's an author and he was the Hunter, the owner, yeah, Hunter, and uh, he's the founder of the brand Meat Eater. Um, but big, big, like very, very popular cool selling author. Um, before he made it right, which was really through his Meat Eater thing on Netflix. Before that, he had something, and I don't know what it was called. It was not Into the Wild, but it's like something like that. I know we used that for our first podcast, but it was something like that. Hopefully, we didn't steal that exactly. But he has a video on YouTube, and it's just Steve Ranella, and you could type in. I think it's Molokai which is the... Um, I've been to that island. Have you? Yeah. What, what are you doing there? sister-in-law got married there. There's nothing there. It's, it's got 6,000 people, give or take. It was like a leper colony. It used to be, yeah. yeah. It was uh, uh, Kalapapa, I think. I forgot the name of the part, but that's on the 
east side of Molokai is a Hawaiian island for those of you. It's in Maui County. There's four islands in Maui County, Maui, Molokai, uh, Lanai, and uh, Kahalawi. So those are okay. But so Molokai. So he's on there. But so Molokai is the, the one that is basically has the most Hawaiians on it. It's yes, they're I've trying to reduce any type of interference. Yeah. And yes. so um, it's awesome. We didn't help that with getting married on the island. Yeah. But I think as long as you get in and get out, they're okay. We actually borrowed someone's car when we were there. And so people were waving to us because they thought we were him because we we're in the car. Um, but anyways, so he's in there hunting with dogs, you know, yeah. and there's a, there's a, a hog pig, pig, whatever. And they've got the dogs and essentially one of the, another pig comes out and starts attacking his dogs and he yep. doesn't want to do anything because they hunt with knives there. So oh. then, um, the guy is busy with this pig yeah. and then another pig comes up. So then he has to go and he, and he tells Steve like, go, go get the pig, go get him. He's yeah. hurting the dogs. And and then he was like, you, you want me to go get him?" Yeah. He's like, go. And it's like some big Hawaiian. Yeah. So he gets into this battle with a pig. Now, I don't think I tried to find it elsewhere. And I think the only place to find it is on YouTube because I believe he doesn't want that series out probably. Okay. Um, but super interesting. So but, you liked the video. I think it's a great video to watch. I think it's tough for some people to watch, but I do think it's okay to know that there are people that use dogs to hunt. And yeah. also they put armor on the dogs I generally. Know. Do you know about this? Yeah. How do you know about that? Because I have a Instagram feed. You see all kinds of yeah, stuff just, on there. Like the the Anatolians in the Middle East that hunt wolves, they put these giant spike collars on them. For wolves? For the purpose of... Yeah, they go out there in the middle of the wolves. The worst part for a wolf to get make multiple it a fair wolves fight. to get you is here. Yeah, just make it a fair fight. Take off the spike collar. Let the dog die and let the wolves kill it. What's wrong with you? Put a spike collar on the wolf, man. Take the vest off the pig dogs. Let the let the pigs kill the dog. You like you don't understand how the world works. Yeah. Pig is not man's best friend. Here's the thing with pigs. I don't like to see any animal get killed. It doesn't I don't like it. I used to be as a kid like, "Oh, that lion killed that thing." And I get that it's nature and I've always gotten into nature, but seeing something violently die yeah. is never good. And I, it just, that's why I told, I talked about in the first podcast, like uh, safaris, like you can really see something die a slow, horrible death. And that just because it's nature, it's, it's not, it's not good. Yeah. Um, but, but the, the, where the hell was I going with that? The, I don't the, know. the, we were talking about wolves in the, but the pigs, oh, pigs have to, they have to be, um, they're destroying yeah. People land don't understand everywhere. That. They're horrible. They have to go. Now, here's my question. Is dogs the best way to do it? I it's kind of have a problem. Okay, that's a good point. And I kind of have a problem with it. Old. If we If we're doing the dog to pig hunting thing, because it's a fun sport, if we, if they could just be shot the pigs and so, we didn't have to use dogs so there so eric knows very, he, he's he goes to hawaii every year yeah, for many many I've been years there many and he times. likes to learn about the culture and stuff yeah there's a lot in the culture so here's the thing about dogs with pigs is a lot of times if you have like a wild area there's going to be a lot of brush and a lot of high grass so you can't actually see the pigs so you need them so who can find the pigs yeah the okay. dogs because well, they can sniff listen, them out. If we need them to help get rid of some of these pigs, then we need the dogs. That's well, the it's, end of story. It's also important uh, to think about when, like you're saying, people look at, uh, I've seen this and I'm not into this either. Like if you think about in Texas, you can go on a helicopter and basically shoot pigs from the air yeah. and they'll shoot them and people will go, that's not hunting. And then people will go, no. It's an eradication program. Yeah. They're getting rid of the pigs. They're not hunting them. They're actually trying to eliminate them yeah. because they root up all of the fruits and vegetables and all of the the produce essentially. And have tons of babies. Like they can do like a mil I mean, they can do like a million dollars of damage in like 10 minutes. Like they can destroy it. And people go, who cares about yeah. the farmer? Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. But I but I get your point about why would you want to see an animal die in pain? You know? Yeah. That's that's hard to to watch. Yeah, and see um, a fight. Yeah, the, the fighting stuff is two it, animals fighting for yeah. Un unnaturally. Yeah, I I think all of it though, whether it's bird hunting, 
pig hunting. It's all stuff that you just don't understand. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, okay. And the, the famous thing to say is always like, do you eat meat? Right? Because if you don't eat meat, if you're a vegan and you don't eat meat, I get it. Want, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Totally. You're totally right. You're right. You're right. We're all wrong. But if you have a like to stand off. Yeah. I but think. if you go to McDonald's and you're preaching about the way that dogs get pigs and stuff, I don't know if you can have a leg to stand on. Well, you don't, obviously. I mean, that's what do you think? Are we allowed to talk about this? What do you think about factory farming and also just like we won't say the names, but you know who I'm talking about. What? Who? I was thinking like foster farms and like the, oh. the, the big, I don't know all the I names. don't know. I learned a lot about it in school. Um, little known fact, I learned this years ago and then I've heard it on podcasts since then. The amount of animals that are killed in the process of farming is out of control. Mm -hmm. And now I've heard it since then, but I knew this 20 years ago. Our teacher was like, do you know how many friggin' little animals are killed to clear a field or to clear for apartments or to clear for lettuce or any, any clearing process is just way more than cows or chickens or any of that stuff. There like more go. single animals are killed in that process then. Now you could say, well, a bird and a mouse are not as important as a pig and a cow. And I get that argument because there is a hierarchy and PETA kind of believes in this hierarchy as well. But if you care about numbers of animals, um, what type of hierarchy is that? I mean, I what, think I think scientific? they have a, a sort of an intelligence scale. Like a so, so you would put sort of scale. Yeah, but they're all sentient, I think. But like you'd basically go killer whales, chimps, and you go bup, 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 and you go down to like insects, right? Now from that would be rodents, da, 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 and you go on. And I think they kind of believe in that. I believe in that. I mean, well, I mean, I don't think a mouse, level. and I think humans are at the top, and that's where we get it differently. I think with them. What's funny though is, I think. Um, well, I was gonna. I mean, that whole thing about the beetle I was telling you the other day, but it's like. I, I don't, you know, I'm a meat eater. And so, but I understand that the meat doesn't just show up in a plastic bin at the grocery store. There was more to the story than just, it just showed up. Right. So, but I also don't want to see even insects suffer needlessly or anything. For sure. I catch them and like throw them outside. Yeah. I, 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 there's a lot of, I've been given a lot of spiders a pass. Like where I'm like, I should kill this thing. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't deserve to die. Three strikes and you're out. I'm going to let you survive in the bathroom for today. Yeah. And I just let it go. I saw a, a meme or something. I was like, what if that spider in the corner of your room like thinks you're his roommate? And he's like, yeah, we're cool. And then you just one day like kill it. It's like, I saw I was like, what like the that. hell, dude? Like four years ago, I saw something like that. And it like, it got me. Yeah. I was like, that's so smart. So I want to kind of answer your question. Factory farming, I think we all know is probably not great. Um, but like... The, the hunting or not hunting argument, you ever hear like a big group of people and they like say something and you immediately, rightly so, sort of dismiss them as human beings and you just go, we have nothing in common. We will probably never have anything in common. Mm -hmm. And like we are, we live in two completely different worlds of thinking and you might be my neighbor but we are, we're going to never agree on anything. We're so far apart. Yeah. The hunting versus not hunting, are hunting is bad argument is so, they are so off. Like, yeah. especially if they eat meat, they are so off. Yeah. They're like, it just doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense. It's like that, that, oh, the muzzle thing. Yeah. Our friend that where's, we, what's the leg to stand on? Do you the, just, the guy from Montana you factory farming and not deer that are overrunning the Lyme, the, the, the Lyme disease population, the Lyme disease problem. We have a friend who has Lyme disease, very it's severe so serious, Lyme disease. Yeah. I've heard Lyme disease comes from ticks. That's what I've heard. No, that's a fact. Deer ticks, bro, the East coast and where I'm from Oregon, they have so many deer. Yeah. If we can, if we can reduce Lyme disease with reducing deer, why aren't we doing it? Do you know how horrible this Lyme disease is to people? It's insane. It's insane. And we're not doing this. The government isn't doing anything. Do, if we reduce deer, do we reduce Lyme disease? That's my first question. Because if it is, we need to reduce deer. So I can't answer 
that question. But what I can tell you is the way that a lot of the Lyme disease moved was they believe from deer. So deer were put on tra uh, basically trains and cars of some sort for various reasons, I think like 60 or 100 years ago, whatever. So there's a lot of rules on state, you know, state, state rules on um, wild game and they are concerned. So there's another thing that chronic wasting disease, which goes on in um, deer and they don't exactly know why it happens. Um, there's a lot of people think yeah. they know why it happens, but either way. So because of that, they don't want sick deer coming into the state. So there's, they're very uh, serious about making sure it doesn't cross. But I did read that uh, ticks were introduced from, I, I don't know if it was from the East coast to like Michigan area from, I read it in a book somewhere that it was from moving, um, you know, deer. So I'm sure there's a large yeah. amount of deer, um, or, you know, and then there's also, uh, ticks in parts of Hawaii too. And I thought but Southwest doesn't have it. I think it's because of the really dry, we, have ticks. I don't, we don't have a lot of them. We don't have a lot of them. We yeah. We have them. Yeah, I, or I, maybe it's maybe that Lyme disease isn't, isn't huge. It's but, not huge here because it's because yeah. we don't have a lot of ticks. But it's a lot of people that are from like uh, New England area. Oh East yeah, Coast. It's dude. Bad. I have two. I have two stories. One is a client came out last week and they told my trainer they were from the East Coast and they told my my trainer. Oh, I think it was the clients. I clients come from Maine, which we talked mm. about. I think they said there is a new disease, for a tick-borne disease that if they bite you. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard this from them. And then I think I maybe saw an article. If they bite you, you are allergic to red meat with that a certain disease. Death sentence. Can you imagine? So bad. So there's new diseases. And then the other stories, my wife's from Pennsylvania. We go back there. It's like the kids go outside, Our her family. They'll like go outside and play around. And then they come in and they're like, you got to look your children over and get everything. Mm -hmm. Every time the kid goes outside. It's, yeah, it's mostly from Dude, like the grassy. What are, we, what are we doing though? Yeah, the grassy areas. You East Coast people, I feel horrible for you guys. They say that about the earthquakes out here though. Yeah, but the earthquakes happen once a year, dude. Every time your kid goes outside, you're like, let me check your body. I think well, it's a reason you have to wear certain types of uh, clothing to like keep them off of you to some yeah. degree. Um, this is too much. You don't like it. It's like the sharks on this. That's on exactly I was California. Thinking the same thing. Hey, <laughs> everyone's being bit by uh, not everyone. There's a lot of shark attacks. How about if we come up with humane? By the way, here is my humane ways to get rid of sharks. They've done studies. You take shark blood and you put it in the water. All the sharks leave. Really? That's what I heard. Great white blood That's in the water. That's what they say. And um, so, so how about we do something like that? How about we do my killer wealth thing with sharks? You gotta come up with something that reduces the shark instead of just saying like, we're going to have all the deer in the world. We're going to have all the, all the ticks in the world. We're going to have all the sharks in the world. And we're not going to do anything about it society because the certain governments are scared of an element of the population that is going to get mad about any, um, abatement or, or, or hunting or, or when there's overpopulations and they're going to try to do stuff on the down low, these municipalities to reduce this, but we're not going to really do anything to really, it's like when I was driving through Oregon last summer, I was driving through parts of Oregon. The trees are so thick by Klamath Falls, Oregon. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my God, dude, if a, if a wildfire comes through here, it's, it's going to be the craziest wildfire ever. Then I get to other parts and they go like every other tree and it's all thinned out. And I'm like, okay, this is different. But there are some parts I go, oh, this whole town is done if the fire comes through. Like, why, they, they, you got to do something about this stuff. Well, you know how people also, and I get Am I right? that. I get, you are right. I get that there's an issue with uh, people in, um, you know, Brazil, like Amazon burning down forests and stuff like that. So I don't, I'm not discounting that. Uh, as somebody who recently went to basically Eureka, Montana, give or take, um, yeah. which is near the Canadian border, it was it described to me that the amount of trees is like similar to br like blades of grass. There's yeah. so many trees and it's it, depending on where you are, right? It's just 50 miles of just like straight trees. And oh, it's so, least. but there's so many of them that you, you can't even see through it. I know because it's just nothing but trees, which I'm not against it. I'm just, uh, I did think it was interesting what you're talking about, about clearing, um, 
areas, fields and stuff like that. It's the same way with solar. If you go on the eight freeway, you'll see a lot of solar farms and they basically have to just wipe an entire section clean of, yeah. in order to put all this stuff on there. For sure. And I mean, obviously they don't want a bunch of animals landing on their stuff. Yeah. And so I get it. Um, but I do, I would like to know more about this hierarchy thing because okay. I do agree. I mean, I, in, intuitively you think a deer is more valuable than a mouse, mouse. less valuable than a chimp. Eh. Is that, are we doing that? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, is I, it because it's more like us? Um, or is it just sheer you could argue it's smarter you just could you could maybe argue it feels more pain i don't know the chimp yeah, maybe but what about like a gorilla i feel like they don't feel like a ton of pain no they do i mean I, I, the same as a chimp but compared to a deer i wonder yeah i wonder i don't know but no, don't i know. mean i think most people have a hierarchy but it, it often goes like mammals birds rodents insects but i would even go listen social killer whale the social social chimp i don't maybe that's wrong actually why that's a good point why would it be more valuable do you know than what's, a deer what's or a cow what's a theme of of what we've been talking about over the last few weeks is how brutal the wild truly is and a lot of times when people do hunt i mean there's things that go wrong but when people do hunt they can shoot an animal and it can die basically instantly that's what hunters try to do that's the goal right but yep. there's a situation where um people or you know i mean there's a number of ways like in a normal nature or natural environment the the older when the the bucks they get really old eventually they they start to break down the new bucks come in and push them out yeah and they put and they they usually will eventually like starve to death or have some terrible way of dying for sure you know um so when you think about the rea the reality of where they live, it makes you think, like, is it that bad that here and there? Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> of course that's. But what about fishing? So I was fishing and I caught a yellow tail. This is like five years ago. And I caught it and I, I kind of felt a little bad. I feel a little bad with fishing too. It's just the hook in the mouth. And like. Yeah, you're like, like this guy probably doesn't love this hook in his mouth. Bro, my daughter went fishing. I actually saw that. Yeah. And yeah. she caught a bunch of yellow tail. Is that what they she were? went with a whole group of girls? Um, and she they, they, she goes, they we caught a shark, and and a she goes, shark? and then they just cut the line, and and I was like, with the, the hook in its mouth. And then, you don't know what type of shark was it? No, it was I like think they didn't one. want to bring it on board. Yeah, one time when I we went to the kelp beds, which is like out in the ocean or whatever, and uh, I went with my dad and a friend, and we had accidentally caught a blue shark. And they have like a, a gaff, give or take. And they yeah, have like yeah. a, a little knife looking thing. And I was like 10 and they're like trying to kill the shark because it's on the boat. And they're like smashing it. And I'm like, this is so violent. <laughs> like, I'm like just looking at this like, this is m crazy. I know. I agree. But we don't hate all you fishermen out there. We're just no, we're just to... free. You know, we... We're down we, with hunting. We're, we're, there's we things we're down with. There's things that, that are viscerally sort of hard to see, especially when you're 10 and you're just like, oh my God. Yeah, it's like a cattle dog getting bit. Yeah, or, we're like normal people. Yeah, no, but it is, I think it's commendable to have strong feelings about things, but I think it's tough on certain people when they realize maybe um, that what they have in their mind is actually just not true. Like the evidence doesn't support yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Like the factory, like, you know, like, oh, um, but I, 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 the point I was going to make about our friend from Montana, yeah, he said last week, he told us that he wanted money royalties on every's mentioned. So again, we're going to owe him more for this. Um, but he, he is a pretty good hunter and he had a conversation like dinner with a vegan couple, you know, and he said that sounds fun. they had a great conversation and totally understood oh, good for each him. other. You know, that's nice. Don't you think that's good. It's like. It's like they could set their egos aside for yeah. 15 seconds. I'd be like, yeah, I, I would. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Hey, let's move on. To, let's do yeah. dog stuff. Yeah, I, I think we should. I was just going to say we should talk about dogs and we'll just cut it off and put it at the beginning to fool everybody. Yeah. Okay. You have topics Back to or dogs, do you want me to give of, you a topic? No, you know, comments. Okay. Before Whatever. we get to comments, 
I want to introduce the coveted breed of the week. Oh, oh yeah. And I don't know the breed. I'm ready. You don't know. So I'm going to give you more than one breed. Okay. Um, give me a, okay. Uh, I'm going to start with, and you have to tell me all the stuff you know. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Akita. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Japanese breed. There's a movie. Okay. Let's not get off on the movie stuff. There's a Stay movie focused, called... Joel. It's not Ichiro. That's a baseball player. Uh, a famous Akita who followed. It's a movie with um, the guy from Seinfeld. Anyway, it's it's unbelievable. He followed the guy to the train station every day. I think then the guy died. And like for 20 years, <laughs> Ichiro or whatever his name was, kept going to the train station every day to wait for the guy to come back. And he never like for years, the dog just sat there and waited for the guy to get off the train. And he never got off the train pretty cool so breed of the week akita akita so um super i want an akita i don't know if i'll ever get one i want one i love them i we were talking about breeds last week and we're talking about connie corso dogo argentino all these dogs pipples um all these dogs have a look and you look mm -hmm. at them and you're like oh that dog's gnarly there is something, the Akita is a dog who, if you look at it, I think they don't, they look, how do I say this? If you were to describe an intimidating, serious looking dog, you would not describe an Akita. However, when you look at an Akita, a big Akita, they are intimidating and serious looking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you were to go, oh, they, on the face, they don't look gnarly but they are gnarly and you don't want to fricking mess with one in the same way you don't want to mess with the other ones, but they have a completely different look about them. And I love, they have attitude. They are great guarding dogs. They need a strong hand. If you want to use that term, just like those other breeds that we mentioned last week. And we mentioned a lot, these serious Anatolian shepherd, uh, uh, uh Tibetan mastiff, um, caucus shepherd, um, Dog Argentino, they're in that same breath of needing an owner that knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. but they're stubborn, but um, they look different and they're from a different place. And they, where are they from? Do you know? Japan. But why are they, why are they so furry? I don't know. Japan's cold, but like Alaska cold. Northern Japan's pretty damn cold. I think um, mountains, a lot of mountains. So, hmm. I, 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 I know where they're from. I don't know when they, I think they're created they old like school to, uh, they look like a big teddy bear. Um, but they, there's different colorations. If you can get one with like a black face, they do them all a lot, lot with black face and then a different color body. They're cool. Would you say I it looks one. a little tiny bit like a Shiba Inu? No, no. I it get looks exactly they... like a Shiba okay. Inu. There's okay. basically a big version of Akita and a small version of an Akita. And the small version is called a Shiba Inu. They're it's the same, same dog. It's just bred They made a big small. one and made a little one. Both from Japan. Both from Japan. I actually think Shiba... It's, I'm not going to get this right, but Shiba Inu means like small Akita, or Akita means like big Shiba Inu. Like, they literally were just like, we're going to make a big one and a small one. Oh, we're going to make the exact same. I looked up the... Any of the Jap Japanese people, please um, fact check China. me on that. What do you think the... Um... I don't want to say average, but basically whatever do you think the weight was in Wikipedia for an Akita for the male, full grown male? What would you say the pound? Did you look is? it up? I did. It's a range? No. Uh I'm just at okay. just, it's just full a grown male. Yeah. Oh boy. It's ninety five pounds. hundred and thirty. Jeez, how was I so off? But I'm you know what is? Dude. But you know what's off by that much? Thirty? But you know which one was? That was a hundred, give or take, no, the female or eighty-five. No, what? um, the Malamute. I don't buy it. A Malamute. Malamutes are have much bigger bones than an Akita. This is AKC. This is Wikipedia, my friend. <sighs> Bro, go try AKC, and I'm gonna fill the time while you do that. I'm not buying it, but I could be wrong. I've worked with a lot of Akitas. Look at as Wikipedia real is quick. A big dog, dude. The Wikipedia. Borble that came out with thick bones was 140. It I'm shows, not buying it. It shows four. This is just, I just, it's Get just off Wikipedia. Wikipedia. 84 pounds for the dog. For what dog? For the male. 
for the dogs. Akita? No, this is for a Malamute. There's no way. Malamutes are... <sighs> All right. I've got... You're so... upset. You're upset. You're a bit upset. I can I'm tell. I'm a bit upset. Yeah, but it says right here for weight, 130 pounds. 60 to 130. That's a huge range. That's a double. Bro, the range is 60 to 130? Yeah. <laughs> for a Malakita? Yeah, it's double the size. 60 to 130? Yeah, that's What 70, kind of range is that? 20. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so then you were right. Yes, I was right in the middle, dude. You're you lucky. get off whatever you're on. Do you want me to go to Japan? It's the Kennel worst Club? thing you're on. Wikipedia? You ever heard of Wikipedia? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, I've got, I, I was going to put this, the, you asked me if I had anything else for this podcast. It's in the same vein and we're going to continue with this. I'm going to ask the viewers of the, I'm going to ask the pod the pod crew or whatever we're calling the pod just call them the pod but someone else came up with the pod something the pod but we'll just say the pod i have an awesome question that i've been thinking about all week mm. and i forgot to say it at the beginning so those of you who stuck around i hope you enjoy this question but let's finish the akita uh, malmute thing can i tell you something about the akita that i remember just off the top of my head yeah uh it says that the akita is a japanese dog breed of large size originating from the mountains of Northern Japan, the Akita has a ah. short double coat similar to yep. that of many other Northern Spitz breeds. Yep. Okay, this we'll get to the Spitz breeds in a second. Historically, they were used by samurai for guarding, fighting, and the hunting of bears. Yeah, the hunting of bears thing I've heard. I haven't heard the samurai What thing. is Spitz breed? Do I need to yeah, look this like, up? It's like, hmm. I think it's, 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 yeah, so there's a lot of little spits like that. What like is that a, like a? It's what, a, I don't know Pomeranian I, looking dog. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I I've heard the spits meaning pointed. there's tons of dogs in that group, but oh, it's like a pointed muzzle. Okay, so okay. so yeah, I love Akita. So breed of the week. I don't want to disappoint people on the Akita breed of the week. I said where they're from. I gave my size thing. I said they're dominant. I said they're stubborn. I put them sort of in the class of other dogs. I said they're awesome looking. Look how nice that one looks. It's like more of a, a whitish. That's yellow. the ugliest one I've ever seen. It looks like a bear or something. Oh, they kind. Of, yeah, didn't I say that it kind of looks like? It looks bears? great, bro. We have away, different tastes. There's a Japanese Akita. Oh my god, this guy's like the client goes. I'm bringing this Japanese Akita to you, and I go, oh, cool. I'm gonna see a Japanese Akita. They're different than those cool looking American Akitas. It looked like an art wolf from Africa. It like had this weird look to it. And I was like, the hell is that thing? Bro, it's a weird looking dog. Can you jump quickly into the differences or any difference that you know about a Malamute? Between an Akita and Malamute? Yeah. Malamutes are bigger. Malamutes. <sighs> um, but that's up for debate, according to Wikipedia. Yeah, I, I I would compare them similarly. Okay, but they look a little similar, right? Yeah, a little bit. Akitas have a whole different body shape. Malamutes are just big all around. Akitas have kind of a bigger chest. Yeah, and then yeah. are Siberian Huskies in any way similar to them? Or yeah, no? to both dogs. Yeah, they're just they're all northern breeds. They're, they're furry, very furry. furry. They're independent. Um, they're working dogs. They're working dogs. All of them, right? Yeah. Except for a Shiba Inu. I don't know what group the Shiba Inu is in. The AKC. I don't group. know what type of work it would be doing. Yeah, I don't know either. You're not sure? Just running around being a little, being a little crazy dude, and Elon Musk putting them on. Oh yeah. You know, Shiba Inus and Akitas are very similar in their nature. The Shiba Inu video that we did was really good. It did. It got a lot of views. Yeah. I don't know why. I need an Akita video. I need an Akita. You want to train an Akita? Or do you want I to want own one. one? I want one. How about half Doberman, half Akita? Weird looking dog. Okay. Can I get to my thing? Yeah, go ahead. I said I, I've been thinking about this all week. I just off and on think about it. I don't actually think about my answer. Here's here's the question. And I want to I want the viewers to weigh in. I really do because I don't have an answer. I have an opinion. And my opinion is of course correct. But I still want to hear your guys' opinions. Okay. Here's it's verses. Okay, these this animal. These three animals. Honey badger, 
versus a Wolverine versus a 40 pound pit bull. Who wins? Not the pit bull. I would not sleep on the pit bull, bro. I've been thinking about this. So can you help me? I think a honey badger is listed. Will you look it up? The size. I believe, I'm guessing. I didn't look this up because I didn't want to look this here up. here we come. Yeah, I think a honey badger is 35. Is I'm going to say, I'm going to say 25 to 40, like 35 pounds. I'm going to say a Wolverine, because size matters in these things, of course. A Wolverine, I'm going to say is 45 to 55 pounds or, or to 50 pounds. And then I said a 40 pound pit bull. Who wins out of those three animals? Don't sleep on the freaking pit. Who's going uh, to come in there, guns blazing and ready to ready to grab and shake. So honey badger is uh, 20 to 35 pounds for males. That's what I said. So I is that said what 35, I said? You said 35, right? At the top end. Okay, go ahead. Wolverine. Well, hey, um, anything else you need about the honey badger before? No, because I'm going to go into some other. I just want to know the weight okay. first. So the next one is a wolverine. Wolverine. So honey badger. I'd say 40 pounds. I know the only. I know more about the X-Men I, guy I think than I do about that. 50, um, up to 50. They look so small. Um, so I'm going to first see. do the honey badger. Okay, here you go. So we are looking like um, males range in weight from... 24 to 40. So they're, right. they're smaller than I thought. But look at the picture. They look small. Yeah, they look small, but they're they just like a little rat. Oh, they can actually see that. That's they're strong. a northern breed, so they tend, a northern animal, so they tend to be a little bigger than what was, oh, the last one was a pit bull. Well, I said a 40 pound pit bull. Okay. But All what right. about just an average size pit bull? That is an average size pit bull. Is it? Okay. All I right. Know a lot about dogs. Here's what, here's honey. I've seen honey badgers like. All these do all these things were attacking. What I'm is going that? with the pit bull? Look at that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bigger pit bull than 40 pounds. Though. Okay. We need a little bit. Honey badger and all these animals were attacking it, and they were like, they had it, and they were like tugging it and trying to kill it, and it it just got away. It goes after leopards. It goes after, and here's why they have these long necks. This is why I think the honey badger, besides its sort of, um, um ferocity and its uh, boldness it has such a long neck that if you get it it will always be able to get you the honey badger it's got a weird neck that's you can't get it anywhere without that thing reaching around and fully biting the you know what out of whatever has it and most animals don't want that so it's the neck of the honey badger that i believe is saving it the thing for the honey badger besides the ferocity the Wolverine, I saw a video. It looks like it's in Canada and it looks like it's shot from a tree stand or a um, a cabin up top. And it's a, a whiteout. And it's this Wolverine killing an elk and just constantly jumping on a giant elk and attacking it. And the elk's freaking out and the Wolverine will just not give up. This is a, what are elk? 700 pounds? Uh, they can easily be 700 pounds. I mean, it's a big male elk. Yeah, especially a male, yeah. It's a male. And this... 40 pound animals killing this elk like that's serious yeah i'm gonna i'm my final answer if it's a 40 pound wolverine i'm gonna go i'm gonna go final answer wolverine versus pitbull and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go wolverine because of the difficulty of the wild versus um versus difficulty of um it's like you being good at jujitsu and a dude who fights every day being as good at jujitsu. He fights every day. Yeah, he's in the UFC. He's in, he's in the U me. But you, but no, but you're a you're a black belt. And he's a black belt. I'm not but black you, belt. I know. But, but let's if say I was, you are, yeah. and you, but you just train. You're good at it. And you train, and you know how to fight. But he's got some street stuff that you don't have. Yeah. The Wolverine and the Honey Badger have street stuff. So that's a great point. So there's a guy who does, and you're going to be like, how does this have anything to do with it? But it does. So this guy on YouTube popped up and he does, he's in Venice and he does jujitsu where he just calls people up and asks them to go with him. Right. Well, he said in his video that he would fight before he knew how to fight before he was doing like MMA, he was fighting every single day. Right. So if you think about somebody, even if they're not like trained in fighting, 
if they fight every single day for like 10 years, which is basically like a honey badger or a wolverine. Yeah. Especially a honey badger. I mean, your, your next level. It's a, yeah, it's another level. But what I was, I, so th this is saying there's obviously Stafford Child Bull Terrier and an American Pit Bull Terrier. I would say the American Pit Bull Terrier, which goes from 35 to 60 pounds and then 29 to 37 for the Stafford Shire. And of course, no one probably believes those weights, but it's a guideline. Yeah. So in that case, an American Pit Bull Terrier would be on the small side at 40. Yeah. So I would say at the, I would say at the 35 pound, I would say the pit bull loses to both. I would say at the 60 pound, I'd he loses. To, I think he loses to the honey badger still. 60 pound pit bull. The freaking the leopards, bro. The leopards, a bunch of leopards couldn't take out a honey badger. Leopards. The pit bull has probably more reckless abandon than, than the leopards though. Bro. Leopards run up a tree with a antelope with no problem mm -hmm. without breaking a sweat. All right. I'm not going to argue your answer. I think, I think the honey badgers for some reason are gnarlier than wolverines. They are gnarlier, but they're smaller. Yeah. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but it, but it matters. It's the size of the fight in the dog. I, yeah. So I want to hear this what you guys have to say. This is not a dog fighting podcast, by the way. No, no, no dogs are fighting. True. Dogs are fighting wolverines. Yeah. Do you think that's ever happened before? Yeah. Well, Wolverines are in... There's Wolverines in Minnesota. They're in... Um, Wisconsin. Probably Montana, too. Maybe. Michigan Wolverines. Yeah. I, I don't know how far... Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, Wolverines there must are awesome. have, they, they must have, have run into pit bulls during some period of time. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Yeah. So, what about... Okay. So, you're... you. So, are you saying the pit bull beats... Both of them, even at 60 pounds, a 60 pound pit bull. Can yeah. Beat both of them. It's a pit bull that's ready to roll is a formidable <laughs> opponent, dude. <laughs> I've seen them. Yeah. They are ready to grab and thrash they like no nobody's on business either. Right? Bro, a, a one that's a, one that's ready to roll, dude, they grab and they shake and they don't stop. But they're what teeth can are resist not like, that. Uh, Wolverines, right? No, and the, these wild animals, they have real thick, they have real thick skin. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you could argue a pit's never been bit by something like a wolverine giving it, even if it's got it, that wolverine flips around and bites as hard as he can. I'm not sure the pit is down for it as much as he once was when he first ran into that yeah. wolverine. And that's the question. So... A, I'm, I want to make this a little bit more complicated for you and the viewers. Good. So it says that a wolf is from 66 to 180 pounds for a male. That's a huge. Oh, that's a big wolf. Dude. So let's say 66 or let's say 60 pound. I know it's not it's 66. Well, let's call it 60 pound pit bull against 60 pound wolf. A giant. Yeah. Yeah. The pit Who wins the pit, pit bull. Yeah. Against the wolf. They're wild. I know. How about 180 pounds? Wolves pound? aren't on their own like these crazy animals. It's the pack, huh? It's the freaking, it's the pack. It's the pod. Yeah. That's where we drive our power. We're, we're dangerous to get over like a, a Voltron, right? No? Yeah, where he stacks up. And so you're saying like a wolf is just not that effective by itself. Yeah. Okay. It is really the pack that makes it. Yeah. They're, they're 180 pound wolf is a 180 pound dog. That's pretty, that's super gnarly, but you know. Remember when I those. was trying to get it to be called the wolf pack and you shot it down? Oh, yeah. I kind of First do. couple episodes. Um, what are other small wild animals? What we'll just do for this podcast is awesome. we'll just small talk animals. about dogs at the very end and we're just going to toss it in the middle. Yeah, we'll edit it. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. The pod likes this stuff. Though. You want to know what other small animals I like? But I want something in the 20 to 50 pound range. Gnarly little animals? Yeah. To 50? That's that's not a small animal. Any cat is pretty mm -hmm. formidable. What do you think about uh, throwing a... Um, what do you think about throwing a bobcat? Mongoose? Ferrets? Oh, do you dude, know my dad has a mongoose? Gnarly. Mongoose. Yeah, they're all over Hawaii, dude. The Big Island. We I joke. went to the Big we'll Island. I was like... There's mongoose around, like it's African animals just cruising. Like this is crazy. The reflexes of a cat and the speed of a mongoose. Yeah. So there's one that was like living under my dad's shed. 
And I was like, what the heck was that? What was that? And he was like, I was, he's like, well, what was it? And I was like, there's something just darted. And he's like, oh, it's probably the mongoose. I go, mongoose? I thought those were in like Southeast Asia or something. Africa, I think. Really? Yeah, they're. An, I think they're an African animal. And they came over on boats to Hawaii. You don't think they're in Asia or they are in Asia? I don't really? think so. Really? Well, I think if they're in Hawaii, they probably Oh, Asia, Asia, like too. they came up north. Yeah, maybe. I don't yeah, they know. probably didn't take the other way. So, mongoose, uh, um, ferrets. So, ferrets are in the um, Mustelidae family, cool. which is the skunk family. These things are tiny. So, fisher. They're weird. Looking. Fishers. Fishers have been known to kill bobcats. How big can a mongoose get? I wonder. They're small. Fishers are big, big ferrets. They're like otters in a way. And they, uh, they kill, um, they've been, they found bobcat, um, fur inside of the fisher. They ate bo a bobcat. That's pretty crazy. Similar to a meerkat? A bobcat? No, uh, um, is a mongoose similar to a meerkat? They're similar. Bro, did you ever like, with the mongoose. did you ever listen to, uh, or that's enough with the mongoose. Did you uh, ever listen to like these old nature shows? Like on Christmas Day, you'd be like sitting at home, and there's like nothing I don't but know. like like it would always be like a bear against something. You oh, never saw those? I don't think so. This is back in the eighties. We could no? get into. I heard on Rogan a bear versus a gorilla, and I or I heard on, from Shorts on Rogan or mm -hmm. whatever. I was like, this is the stupidest argument I've ever heard in my life. It's enough with the gorillas. There are killers and there are not killers. I don't care what a gorilla looks like. He's not a killer. And then there are things that are killers. Like a tiger? Like a lion, a tiger, a bear. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, can't say. There are killers and there are not killers. And a, a gorilla is not a killer. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I take a big chimp over a gorilla. Because they are killers. You are wrong. A, a chimp, chimp over like a, a gorilla? I mean, I think... Well, how big is the chimp? No more than 200 pounds, right? Yeah. I wonder what they are. So, bear versus a uh, gorilla. Um, it's a bear. It's not even close. I think you're tripping. All right, here. let's go to comments. Can we, just, can we just address your blasphemous chimp I could beat a gorilla thing yeah. real quick? So, it's showing a, a male chimpanzee. Some people say chimpanzee or something. Uh, 88 to 130 pounds. 130 pounds. That is pretty light. Yeah. I was telling you that one, uh, those, the average like lowland gorillas were, the males were getting to like 330. Yeah. That's 200 pounds difference. Yeah, I know. I think they're going to crush your boy. Yeah, maybe. Smash your boy. So, you want to say you want to go to this comments? Yeah, let's get on some dog stuff. Okay. Some channel, Beckman's channel stuff. Hmm. It's a lot of water animal talk. Um, okay. I think I can accommodate you here, buddy. Let's see what we got here. So let's just go random. Let's just go. Okay. So I actually talked about this on a podcast or on an earlier podcast, but someone brought this up and it was in regards to, I think what we were talking about last week, which is the off grid dog says the four levels of competence, one unconscious con incompetence so can i stop you this is from our last podcast right where we were talking about sayings true is no no he he says it at the end he says he references what he's talking about at the end. okay go ahead uh two is conscious incompetence three is conscious competence and four is unconscious competence the journalist that thinks he knows more than elon is level one laugh out loud oh he agrees with me yeah he's saying that he he is unconscious at how little he knows Right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's interesting, right? Yeah. I didn't know there were those four levels. I like this guy. It, it says uh, Chang Comments Zhu? from the last Yeah. Oh, it's podcast. always from the last podcast. Yeah. Also, dog trainer here. Oh. Zhang Zhu. Look out. You should start a YouTube channel. Uh, big fan of Joe, he says. I think Joe was wrong on the timeout example. I'm pretty sure. His name is Joel, just by the way. Uh, I'm pretty sure timeouts are negative punishment. You remove the fun from the kid to reduce the possibility of the kid getting in trouble again. The goal here is to stop the kid from getting in trouble. So it's a punishment. For Eric, an example of negative reinforcement would be the seatbelt alarm when you drive. The annoying sound is turned off once you buckle your seatbelt, removing annoying sound to reinforce buckling the seatbelt. Is that true? Did he say negative punishment is the seatbelt alarm going off? 
negative reinforcement. Okay, he's correct. Yeah, I I, I read that and I was like, I'm gonna ask Joel on the air if this is true. Yeah, no, I tried. Good job, Jang. Listen, Shang? I've learned. Yes, the seatbelt example. He learned it somewhere. He read it somewhere. That's the most common That's a good example. example. It's a great example. But I don't want to do stupid examples. I like the timeout. It's complex. Timeout. The timeout of your kid doing something wrong and you put him in timeout. All the almost three of the four legs of opera conditioning apply. And so the seatbelt example is is a good example. Here's I'm I, gonna start I, working for this guy, Shang Zhu. He's called Shang Zhu. Way better. Let's start po- explaining let's start things. A podcast, buddy. Easy to understand terms than Joel Beckman. Yeah. Um. So positive punishment, let's say e-collar. Let's people light up dogs. They they keep lighting them up. So positive punishment. The minute the e-collar stops is negative reinforcement. So one Taking happens. Away. Yeah. If if you're gonna have positive punishment, there's always a moment of negative reinforcement. They they one does not exist without the other. Yeah. And you can use this. You can, you, it's going blurry because my hands, you can use this, um, to train, right? You want bite work and then you want them to let go. You use the e-collar and then right when they let go, you stop the, the shock. shock, Yeah. You know, that makes sense. That's good. Yeah. This seatbelt example is a good one. Okay. If you have a YouTube, let let me know, leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll follow you. Um, Patrick Nyhan. So imagine this is goes to like what we we're talking about at the beginning of the, of the uh, with the cattle dog. Imagine being so good at training dogs that your dogs train other dogs. I love it, and I've heard that a lot. It's I've read that comment ten times at least, probably that one comment or different ones like different that. ones like it. I've read probably about fifty times. Pretty amazing though. See, that's it's what the real... people don't get at the beginning of it. They don't understand the dog is training the dog. What they don't understand is that you do not want your dog to be hurt, nor do you want the other dog to be hurt, but you don't need to worry about the other dog getting hurt because Prince has worked with a thousand dogs and hasn't hurt a dog yet and is not going to hurt. Or Bosco before. Or Bosco. Yeah. 14 years of dogs kicking butt and not getting hurt and not hurting other dogs. Yeah. Um, I'm, I love when they say trained a dog to train other dogs. Yeah. It really takes away from your legacy, but that's okay. It's, it's all my legacy. You know what I'm saying? It is. I trained. Dog, right? I trained. You, you're the one who told me that. Yeah. You're like, he, that's your dog. I mean, I knew he was my dog, but you go, you trained that dog. I like on our last or one of the podcasts, like five ago where we're like, I'm like, you know, it could be a fluke. You know, the first two are a fluke. Got to do it one more time. The first two what? Dogs. Oh yeah. We need a like, third. you just had, got really lucky with two really good dogs. Right. It had nothing to do with your training skills. Um, so this is from the Wackler. I don't know if that's appropriate for, I don't know what that means, but uh, <laughs> another great topic would be generally, how much is too much discipline, helicopter owner, strictness oh, of ru- rules? Let's stop there for a second and let you answer just that, unless you don't want to, and I'll keep moving. Like with a puppy? Just too much discipline. Oh, or age appropriateness. You let dogs and children be children at times in their life and they're going to have freak outs and they're going to talk back at a certain age and you can't go hard on them and dogs are going to um, be crazy and they're going to jump on guests and they're going to possibly run away from and not listen to you. That is normal to a certain age under nine months. I have markers. I think there's a nine month marker. And before that, I think there's a year marker. I think there's a year and a half marker that are very important. Um, Helicopter, so 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 you got to watch my video on um, um, age appropriateness and what to worry about in certain um, ages, and then to his question of helicopter parent. I had a session this last week with two people. I asked them if they were parents. I already knew the answer. It was an obvious no. They're not parents because yeah. they were so helicoptery with their dog. It was it was out of control and. The dog was messed up. Which one's worse? Helicopter or free range? Free range. Oh, no, no. Helicopter, probably. Now, you can't be like... I mean, what's free range? Yeah, helicopter is like more coddling versus what I'm saying is like, 
I take it back. It's like ultra disciplined versus laissez faire, do what you want to do. Ultra disciplined is better yeah. for sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If I, you had to pick one, I think helicopter is a, a very binary different choice. thing, right? That's more of a treating it like a baby. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's like the, the, the dog can never uh, be put in a challenging position. I would say too, with the too much discipline is like, or uh, whatever you want to call it is in strictness of rules. I would say that you should never hurt or injure your dog throughout this process, right? You should never be doing something that causes a physical injury to a dog, right? Yes. Especially if it's now granted, if it's For sure. in the middle of a fight with another dog and trying to kill a dog, yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. try to get, you might end up injuring it. But the biggest thing is, you know, it doesn't pee on the ground. You don't pick it up and body slam it, right? That's not, that's not what There's we're doing on this channel. There's never a reason for it. Yeah. With kids or dogs. Not but body there, slamming kids. There either, is a saying. way that you, that you carry yourself, carry yourself around your dogs. I use the term people come out and I go, act like you own this place. Or I, or I go, when you get home, act like you own the place. And I look at them and I go, cause you do like you literally own your home. Like if you're being accosted when you come in the house, well, what's, what's going on, dude, walk in your house. If your dog, if you don't want your dog to jump on you, walk through them. You own the house. Go where you want to go. Like, there's a lot of things like that. I mean, technically, the bank owns the house, but <laughs> that's true. That's probably why they're walking in their you house. Barely own your home. That's why they're like all meek when they walk in the door. They're like, "Is the bank around?" Uh, how about this number two? When is it okay and not okay to report someone for potential animal that. abuse, neglect, or ask a welfare check on the dogs? I I saw that. I was like, I thought about it for like a minute, and then I forgot about it till now. I don't, I mean, if the dog's tied up outside in the cold, I, I mean, what are the situations? Like, I don't even know of the situations that are out there in the world that you would say, like, I I'm had a tying call, up a dog. I had a call. I had a, I had a phone call from a guy from Poland. He'll probably see this. He couldn't work. He got fired from his job because the dogs were barking all the time. He sent me videos of these Polish people in this neighborhood and they just left their dogs outside and he mm -hmm. said it's very dangerous they sometimes get out and they go after kids and yeah he showed me all these videos of his polish neighborhood and these dogs are just left outside he went to the court system he went through and the judge is like basically like yeah they can have their dogs outside and i said the same thing i go bro you can't take the 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 tact of your their dogs are barking in on a fence within their property i go it sucks but like the, the, the laws allow a dog to be within a property and bark where the sound is emanating to outside the property and bothering other people. I just think that it's a dog. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they left, but they left their dogs outside all the time here to bark. So I think if you see someone hitting a dog, I mean, I think our first podcast, we talked about how I was like, when they had a dog, it was an outdoor dog. Uh, and it was like, to me, it was weird that people had their dogs indoors. Oh yeah, when you were a kid. Yeah, it's just a dog ran around the backyard. That was what it did. It didn't go in the house. Yeah. I'm not against it. I just it wasn't the case. I know. So I think different countries are gonna have different reads on this. Like yeah. maybe the Dogo Argentinos. I, I think what you it's fair to say that some Dogo Argentinos in Argentina go in the house and some don't. Yeah. Yeah, there's cultural things too. So when to when to um when, call, to, report. when to report it? Is it snitching or would you say that's snitching? If you're like crazy about it, if you have a way you think dogs should be like a raised and then you're just all like, that dog's outside a lot. I'm like, yeah, the dog's outside a lot. Yeah, the dog it, probably likes it being outside. Yeah, the dogs like being outside. Yeah. They probably like, like is it not cold? Is it not hot? Okay, the dog's outside. I know, but it's, they do have fur too. I mean, I get there could be too hot or too cold, but like, Siberian Husky isn't getting too cold, as we've mentioned in previous podcasts. It's almost impossible. Yeah, like it's fine. Well, Husky, a uh, Malmute's never getting cold. You could just bury them in snow for like a week. And they just chill. That'd be fine. Um, three, what do you do when you hear consistent stress barks? So this person's like genuinely trying to figure something out here. Uh, they're like, they have a neighbor that they don't like. Three, what do you do when you hear consistently stressed barking but don't interact with the neighbor or an unkept looking dog unkept 
Is this the same person? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, that's dude. They're that's going down a road here. That's uh, off. What's his name? This might be the Polish the Wackler. <laughs> this might be the Polish guy that I had the call with. <laughs> this is actually funny. Four. What do you do about a dog sneaking into your yard to mark your intact dog being obsessed with another? It's the same person. It's the same. It's one dog. Okay. Unkept dog. I mean, the the way to deal with things is generally not to call the authorities. Uh, you can do it that way. It's probably not the most effective way to it's do it. Create other problems potentially. And like, what are the authorities going to do? Like, hey, you need to shave your dog or get the mats out, or we're coming back here. Like, it's they're not going to do thing. that. If you think about unkept, like if you think of that, it's like. Does it have to go to the spa? I mean, does it? I know people legit oh, well, take them to, you know, yeah. the poodle places and they, yeah, they give them shampoo and stuff. Uh, we never did that with our dog. Nah, but you, you have some dogs mad up. Doodles like really mad, mad up, and you got to brush them. Poodles. What happens if they mad up? It's a pain. They, it gets worse. It just builds it the map, clumps, builds right? on itself. Then you got to shave it off or cut it. It's a whole thing. Un but I don't know what unkept. What this person means. I think this is my Polish client. My Honestly. friend, my friend, uh, had a cat that had like the huge, like, like locks almost. Right. Yeah. And they were just everywhere. Yeah. I won't, I'll tell you after what we called them, but, um, we'll yeah. keep going here, but, but so you get what there's, you get the theme of their questions of this part of Wackler's question. Yeah. Wackler. Do you think it's that Wackler is a Karen? With a name like Wackler, <laughs> I think it's a guy. Uh, so why do you think it's a guy? Wackler? Yeah, could be a last name. Yeah, it could be. Um, um, it might, no, I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 we don't know where this person is. This person could be in like where these dogs are just like mangy mutts, you know, in some part of the world. And like these dogs are living horrible lives. And the person's like, hey, or this could be like a full on Karen who's like, like a Ukraine or something, like living in like a war zone. Yeah. And the person's like, cares about the dogs. He's like, why I, I is it not shampooed today? Yeah. And you're like, we're in a war. We're in the middle of a war. I can't shampoo my dog. I'm like, I can barely take a shower myself. <laughs> you want me to clean the dog? Like yeah. cutting nails and stuff like that. Do dogs need their nails cut? Really? Is this true? Some do. So white nails will often just work themselves down. They're softer. Mm. You ever see dogs with white dogs nails? have white nails? I think white dogs. <laughs> Like Prince and Bosco have black nails and they're hard as anything. You have to get them cut because they don't wear them themselves down. Yeah, it's horrible. They don't like it? No, because I use the freaking clippers. Like, and if you ever like- It's hit like the, a weird angle, if right? If you ever hit the quick at any point in a dog's life, the dog's like, um, we're not doing this. And I just didn't do it enough with Bosco had really long nails and we'd take them in and they would just grow and keep growing. Prince doesn't have as long nails, but you got to cut your dog's nails somehow or they have to wear them down because what'll happen, this is my, my theory. Dogs are, let's say walking like this, right? If the nail is too long, the nail hits the ground, the digit then comes up. Well, imagine if that digits always like higher, you're yeah. going to have pain up here. It's like forced out of place. It's forced to be like this a lot. Sorry, the camera. It's forced to be like this up. And there's going to be pain maybe up in the knuckle area. Are you flexing? You look like you were flexing. Are you going to read the, the person who liked my shimmering forearms? The comment? Um, or you don't want to give me the props that I deserve from the Have listeners? you been working out consistently? Are you going to read the comment? We need to know how your regimen has been going first. It's good. Oh, yeah. Multiple days a week. I'm working out, but the person said, look at those on my last video. Oh, you're not going to read it. Cause it I'm not going to lie to you. It also is, uh, you know, reading 200 more or more, uh, comments. It wasn't the top <laughs> of mind. For me. It was the top of mind. So the person in a video said, look, I can't concentrate on the video because of those shimmering forearms of mine shimmering. And I was very, I wonder um, what Liz thinks of that comment. I told her it, I told it to her. I think it was a dude. <laughs> I do. It was a guy in there. So which is fine. Yeah, let's give him some uh so the I like oh, this is the one I was referring to. It's gonna be all confusing when we chop up this podcast and move it around. The which last not, 30 neither. minutes was great. You first have the kind of serious hour or so, and then you just shoot the ish for a while. That's all good. 
Good job, Bill Mack. That's a good one. Uh, I have another one. You want to hear this one? It, it's a series of comments. I think you've read it and probably know it, but off-grid dogs. All dogs have natural aversion to fighting to avoid injury or death. This was bred out of pit bulls to facilitate dog training or dog fighting ability and is what makes the breed different from others. This person says, coupled with high prey drive and tenacious nature. That's a hard to handle breed, which mm -hmm. is what you were kind of saying earlier, uh, just about certain dogs. Uh, this person says, yes, and unfortunately a breed that often attracts the wrong kind of pet owners. A little bit hard to understand hard to deny right and then the last That's uh, hard to deny. person said back to them yes either too soft and coddling or people who want it for its bad reputation neither of which can handle that type of dog okay you oh. agree are they yeah. on the right track yeah 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 and did you see someone we comment about dmx having pit bulls and you saying you think he was a great pit bull owner somebody commented and it was like went down the list of dmx's it's like called for animal abuse multiple times and apparently he was not a good pit bull owner I, I think that's uh, I, I'm blaming the media for biased coverage of DMX. That could be true. He also had a serious drug problem, which I'm is not conducive to being a great dog owner. I will not deny that, but I would <laughs> like to say that Crack. you know how people, no matter how much evidence you give them, just won't don't get it. They're just like, I don't believe you. That's what I'm at with DMX right you, now. You love him, and you're not gonna. You're not changing my opinion on DMX, bro. <laughs> I know I'm not. He's been dead. I was listening to him. When I know I was 18 years old. I, I'm not. You know, I like know. you said, you got chills from the Rough Rider uh, anthem. I'm not going back. You can't make me like him for 20 years and say this person's now yeah. bad. Yeah, just don't don't believe what that what the media. I agree. Yeah, you know, I mean, I could be totally who knows wrong. if it's true. I could be totally wrong too, but yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. You put on that Rough Riders, you're singing a different tune. Okay, ready? Yeah, Neil. I'm not going to go with this. We'll call him Neil. Hi, Joel. I just maybe we didn't talk about. It. Hey, Joel. Uh, just a bit of personal feedback. I much prefer your regular dog training videos to the podcast. Hmm. For me, I have learned so much from those uh, since I rehomed my eight-month-old Golden. He was a lockdown dog uh, owned by a couple who had never owned a dog previously. Never walked him on a leash, blah, 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 blah. Um, big thanks from Cambridge, UK. Um, yeah, the numbers bear out. People like my regular uh, videos to the podcast. Yeah, so I think it's a two hour podcast. Yeah, I think we are completely clear on the fact that um, a five minute video will get a lot more views than a two hour video. I'm pretty sure. Is this true? Yes. Okay. Fair. Um, do you generally clean your house while watching a five minute dog video? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. So this is meant to be a thing for the pod and for the yeah. hardcore fans. Yeah. For people that want to listen to it. What if they don't want to listen to it? What should they do? Yeah, they can just move on. Yeah, you could just not click. So can it you- It doesn't take anything away. I know where you're going. Can you educate them? Takes nothing away from the regular videos. I We don't do enough hours and hours of preparation. You might be surprised by that for this podcast to take away from my normal videos. You do work. You do yeah. a fair amount of work. I don't do that much work. I've also well, you're had- You're the star. You just show up. I kind of just you show You just up. grace in- 30 yeah. minutes late, record, and then you're like, all right, make sure to get that up by Thursday. All right, let's go get pizza. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's go get uh, some uh, barbecue uh, in yeah. this case. So, but I guess my beef is, you know, there's always a little bit of truth, right? When you're getting upset about something <laughs> that someone's saying in the comments. But for me, it's like you cruise over on Tuesdays, we record the podcast. He's telling the truth. Yeah, I, po what I post do. it over the next day and a half. Yep. right? Come up with the different things and get it on the different audio podcasts. It literally has nothing to do with whether we do a Sunday video, which we're always doing in yeah. like a Friday video. And another video. It has nothing to do with that. It's just because we're so consistent with this Tuesday, which is Thursday for them, Thursday podcast, that they're just seeing all these podcasts and they think we probably thought, hey, let's just stop doing these and start doing this instead. But it's not yeah, the case. It's not. And the reason there hasn't been two videos a week for a while. Well, like during COVID, I did a video every day. Uh, and that's, we're far from that now. But like why are, there hasn't been two regular videos a week is my private sessions have been very underwhelming. For you. For me and for the viewers, if I made a video of it, mm -hmm. they're and just very underwhelming. I don't know. It's been a weird patch of privates where I'm like, okay, I can make a video out of this. 
but it ain't that good. There's not that many learning opportunities in it. There's not many interesting opportunities mm -hmm. in it. And it's been like three weeks of like underwhelming private sessions. And could we give them some inside baseball real quick? I'd love to. That's so what this pod is about. The pod, the pod for the pod. I'd say when you do a video like maybe a Chihuahua, there's going to be a small amount of people that have a Chihuahua that would love that video. They would love it. But the percent, if you think there's, you know, 500 breeds or whatever there are, but just let's call it 300 for the simple simplicity that there's not that many Chihuahua people that are, you know, only going looking for Chihuahua videos. So it's not going to really make a, a dent. We have figured out that people that are, um, when dogs are aggressive at Prince or at any dog, right. Or they're just big, huge dogs, Akita's, uh, all the ones we mentioned last week, Kane's, all those people click on and want to see a big, tough, gnarly dog. Yep. I know. I know. And we do a little beagle and no one watches the, the sh they don't watch it. I know. They don't care. I know. I could do more like a lot of people uh, do like about the, the client being tough or the client not knowing anything. I could do that. I had a session recently where me and this lady did not vibe. And I it, it was like awkward and weird. And I'm like, if I put this up, she's going to get so destroyed. Yeah. I don't know guy. if I can put this up. I, I And it would have been compelling, very compelling. But I'm like, I can't do that to this woman. And I didn't, I didn't even like like her that much. Is there like a, I don't want I, I'm not talking about what you're talking about. But you about. guys would have liked it. The viewers. I'm not talking about what you're talking about. So don't think we're referencing what you just said. But do you think there's some type of animalistic nature? Well, because obviously humans are animals. Some people think this is not true, but it is true. We're part of the animalia kingdom, correct? Yeah. Um, there's like that visceral thing where sometimes like, and I don't know if it's a frequency thing, and I, I'm not saying that figure or uh you know what is that literally okay. but there's it's like maybe you go to a party when you're 20 years old right and there's a guy who is there and you're just like oil and water and yes, you're not that's what it was like understanding why that's what it was like well i do know why but yeah that, that there's, it's like energy i think there is like um yeah i think it's an energy thing and then i, I remember being at a party where something like this occurred and it was like me and this guy did not like each other. Yeah, it and happens. It, it like we were outside and it was getting escalated. And I think we both had a group of friends that were pretty crazy. And yeah. so like there's pressure from the different groups to be like, you are our representative in this little dog fight. And so it was weird, but it was like, what was it about this person yeah. that is creating this like instant and I, it's almost like a dog and cat thing like when you said like last week when we said that dog just sprints after that cat yeah it's like like you know and so maybe that's what happened um in general with that lady uh, you know in general okay so that, that that your deal is like it's a young man's deal and it sort of almost escalates to a fight it's but like there an are ego thing there are oh. other situations where you're just with people as an adult and they have kids and you're at a party and you're just like talking to somebody and you're just like, you guys are, you, you should kind of be able to talk or be friends. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, I don't care we are not guy. vibing at all. Like it's, it's awkward or it's contentious immediately. And it can be for a variety of reasons. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, I think what it is too, and maybe we should do some human videos and then we should have Joel break down the human body language. That'd be awesome. Mm. Like if you think about, um, a lot of the body language, I was mentioning this like on a call on Sunday, you and I were talking, but this idea of if you see someone who has this like ridiculous swagger where they're just like throwing their arms and just like act, they got their chest all out and they're just looking like they're, you know, going to rip someone's head off as they walk down the road, you know, they're someone's going to go up and just beat them up or something. And they're going, why, why, why did that guy do that to me? And they're not realizing that you can do that stuff, but there is people don't like that, like aggressive looking behavior, right? Just the same way you wouldn't stare at people. Yeah. What do you think about staring people, dogs, humans? What do you yeah. think about this? Yeah. It's an instigation. 
So, I mean, right. I think a lot of people that in every animal, I think uh, people that, like spend a lot of time in college would go, there's nothing wrong with somebody staring at you. They're perfectly free to stare at you. They are. They yeah. might get punched in the face though. <laughs> Not by you, but I mean, by, yeah, by but, somebody, but if you keep getting buff, they might, you, they, no one knows what you'll do. Right. No one knows. <laughs> Yeah, I think it isn't that amazing though. That tell me we're not. I mean, I know we are animals, but the fact that you could just stare at someone like I'm staring at you through a screen right now. Look at this. Let's just stare at each other. Like I stare at you through a screen, and there's like a like you have to soften your gaze, or you can create a fight among. That's people. how. Yeah, that's how you talk to people. If I'm just talking to you, like like <sighs> and you have to go, hey, what's up, and then you just do a look away, yeah. which you can't see. I'll do it in camera. You know, you're talking, you're talking. Then you do occasional look away. Then you talk. That's the normal thing. Yeah. Anything else is, is bad. I had this situation, bro. This is another where it's not a fighting situation, but someone we know. And like, we saw this person. They might watch podcasts, so I got to be careful because the person. I think I know what you're going to say. Go you ahead. have no idea. And me and my wife, my kids are there. And then he came up and he just talked to my wife. The whole time. It didn't acknowledge me at all. And it wasn't like, like I knew what was going on. And so I just sat there and you I just, it. I just watched and I'm just like, okay, what's like, how's this going to go down? Like, like, is he going to ever acknowledge me? And how's my wife going to deal with this? It's like Michael Jackson with the popcorn when you just, yeah, I was like, I'm just going to watch this. I do that with clients too. I'm like, I'm like, are they going to, and it was a very interesting thing. I know two people who will remain nameless. Who I'll tell and you it's after. not a time to go, bro, you want to go? Like, it yeah. doesn't matter. Like it, it doesn't matter. But you will, if you need to. Of course. Cause yeah. I'm a badass. Yeah. But like, it wasn't, you know, like you're nothing's going to happen. Yeah. They're, they're, my wife, you know, yeah. Yeah, your wife, nothing's going to happen. Your wife is a loyal wife. Course. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. So I just I'm like, let's let's see. I want to get the judge of this guy's character, so I know if in the future this person can be, uh, um, if we could be friends with this person. There's two people that you know that I've hung out with who have actually three, but we'll say two that have been around my wife that I was like, this guy totally likes my wife, like like legitimately likes her. And then there's like one of them. I was like, this guy, and he was a, a shade younger. Uh, he, I was like, this guy loves my wife. Like he loves her. Like, and I just Attracted knew Attracted to her. Like he wanted to marry her. Okay. Like, for, and I don't know if we were married yet, but I was like, it, it was painted all over his face. He couldn't hide it. Like he was obsessed. Yeah. I'll tell you later who it was, but. Um, I know him. You know, both these people. Okay. Um, and, and to be fair to the other one, He's actually that guy, not the one who's head over heels in love, but the other one actually is like that with a lot of people's wives. So it's just yeah. kind of a character problem. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's funny. But um, see, you see how it goes from like humans? It just goes right back into dogs. It's all this stuff is kind of tied, right? Sort of. This isn't really tied. It's like mating stuff, though. Oh, that's true. That's like a good in point. the dogs, right? The dogs are. That's a good point. Like if you remove the mating opportunities from Bro, we could, dogs, then like there would be probably way less situations. I had a unfixed female today and I have to go, okay, Prince is out. Who's not neutered. Who's intact. Yeah. And I'm like, we shouldn't let another female out. This dog's being great with other dogs. Why are we throwing a female in the mix when, she, when the dog who came out to me is intact? Prince is intact. There's a little something going on there where prince is like hey what's up we let another female in there it might not be good and Will we the females go out it? it's possible it's probable or possible not probable possible okay. but you got you're on your toes yeah you're on your toes. toes like yeah. it was all males for this dog should i've let a female out maybe i probably should have put the intact males away then let the female out you know it remind me of that song who let the dogs out when he said that i don't know why yeah that's we get that in the comments too. What? They go, oh, I guess Joel let the dogs out or something. <laughs> um, no, but we could do a whole podcast on the on marriage like dynamics and yeah. like Dan Balzarin. Dan Balzarian, yeah. He had an interesting. He's like, if I'm out with a girl and some dude talks to her, 
He's like, it's, it's on her to shut it down. It's not on me to shut it down. And then you can get the temp, the, 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 the temperature of the girl you're with. Yeah. I, I am very polite. Like I, I owe, if I see Bro, a female trying to talk to me with her husband there, oh. I'm going to like turn the conversation to a more general topic for sure. And 95% of the population will. Yeah. You're like, Hey, also you have to like, like if your wife is super like flirty, <laughs> This podcast is ridiculous. if your wife is super flirty, like the the husband's gonna have to like intervene. If your wife isn't, like, like you can chill. Like well, nothing's gonna happen. But guys can be flirty too. You can still chill a what, little bit. What I, see, I don't mind the flirting and all that stuff. What I don't like, I do mind it. But what also, I also are like, you out drinking and clubbing every night? Yeah. But what I don't like, that's when stuff happens after what? 1 p.m. You know, everything bad Nothing happens, good happens 10, after 10 p.m. Like yeah. if you're home with your kids and you live a normal life, like what's going to happen? Well, stuff happens. It's like the Chris, Chris but, Rock joke or whatever. Where he's like, you didn't, you never cheated on your wife or maybe it was that it was the other one. The opportunity. Is it Kevin, Kevin Hart or something? I don't know. He's like, yeah, no one wants to hook up with you, dude. Like, of course you don't cheat on your wife. Chris right? Rock. Was that Chris Rock? Yeah, it's like as as you know a lot of comedy opportunities. Stuff. As, yeah, yeah. He's Faithful like, is your opportunities. Yeah, he's like, Come I on. cut you off. You were saying something, and I just cut you off, and you seemed into it. Oh, I think it was about. Um, oh, I think it was about tr trying to like circle the the men in back into the conversation or whatever. So that yes, uh, that's what, exactly what you do. You yeah. sit there and just like chat it up with someone's wife, like you guys were just like, <laughs> oh, like, hitting it off. Yeah, I think it was the flirting part. Or oh no, I think what I was gonna say is like, okay, flirt all you want, but like, I'm not an idiot, bro. Like yeah. I can I can read it all over your face when you're all googly eyed and you're like, oh, oh, what do you do? You snowboard? Oh, I I used to snowboard too. He's got to know the if the guys if the guys over forty, he knows the husband sees what's up. It's like when you're at a bar and someone's about to get punched in the face. So everyone knows except the guy about to get punched in the face. Yeah. You're like, this guy is not happy. Yeah. He's not happy. So you have to, um, but yeah, I, I just think it's, it's goofy when people don't realize how, how obvious they're coming on to people. I don't see it a lot though. I mean, cause this yeah, is like, we live this like certain life, like, like with respectable friends and we don't, meanwhile, if we don't go out. Like there's not a lot, there's no drinking. Yeah. And so drinking, it's like, we don't, I don't run into makes it. I don't run into, that that would bro, change it changes everything. Yeah. Should alcohol be legal or illegal? Legal. Is there anything to be said for making it illegal? Of course. <laughs> you're all like, the wife well, beatings the, would go down. You're all the 60,000 people that the die drunk from driving from would drunk go driving down. Dust would go down. <laughs> they, like, you, you know, the amount of, of domestic abuse that would be solved without alcohol. Yeah. I think the, you know, even marijuana, right? You could say like on whole, on the whole, there's, I think it would cause some issues with people being like less uh, motivated to do stuff in their life. Yeah. But as far as like sheer damage, if you go out on a Friday or Saturday night, right. And you like, look at alcohol. what alcohol does. It's yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. There's just like, you, you just go drive down the street and you're just like, Oh, somebody just plowed through that sign right there. Like it yeah. just, the, the whole like street sign just knocked over. Yeah. And you're like, I wonder who did it. Yeah, I bet it was a stoner. Just kidding. No, yeah. obviously, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you got anything else before I get into another one? I'll throw these comments. We'll do this all day. We'll do this all day. We've got ten minutes. Okay, I've got a comment for, or I want to do an apology, and is the apology is for not doing more merch. Not that we're not sell, trying to sell oh. the merch, that we're just not doing the second it's a merch. real apology. Yeah, I actually did a. We got to do it. a new design. Oh, really? And I did it uh, over the week, but I, I just not done yet. And I'm just in, I'm not that motivated to do Bro, it. Bro, you're against us selling this shirt. And I don't know why. No, we'll do this all day. Go ahead. You could do that shirt. I don't care. This is the Beckman shirt from day one, 15 years ago that employees wear. Oh, but my employees don't want me to do it. They want to have special yeah. ones. I said that. So, and they're like, no, we want, if we had trainers to Beckman's dog training trainer, 
I, I can give them that then sell the pod this shirt. Do you guys want this shirt? I would assume you want it. That's what you said. And what are the guys? <laughs> you want it? Okay. So um, I actually want to go for about seventeen more minutes because you want two hours. Yeah, we we cracked the two hour last time, and then we went off on some crazy topic, and then we had to slice out a little bit. That's why you heard us say we hit the two hour mark, and then if you look at the video, it wasn't actually two hours. Yeah. So that's the reason for that. Yeah. Um, this person is Lisa Leon Dyer. I don't know, Lisa. I just finished watching for the second time. She's talking about the podcast. The apology section is my favorite part. The creepy cat was hysterically funny. I'm honored to be part of the pod squad. Now she's really a part of the pod squad. Yeah. Because we're at a shout out Lisa. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Um, This person, Land White, W-I-G-H-T. Love the vids and the podcast. I only discovered this channel a couple months ago. Uh, So still going through the videos and also realize I need to watch the good ones more than uh, once because there's a lot and I forget things, but working on improving behaviors with my dogs, a couple uh, or a couple few thoughts. Uh, One kind of surprised when people say they like the videos better than the podcast, because there are so many videos. Have these people really watched all of them and used all the techniques? If something wasn't covered, that would make sense. But I'm just still so happy that there's so much you can learn from for free here. Thanks, Joel. That's a good point. I never thought of that. People are like, I, 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 I want more videos. There's so many videos. There's like almost like 500. You want, no, but I get what the people are saying. They're like, we want new videos. Yeah. But like, if you want videos, go a year and a half ago, you're probably going to get different, but probably in a way more educational videos than I even make now. Maybe not. Maybe not. And then the next thing they said was audio versus video. This podcast is the first one I listened to didn't watch and somewhere in there one of you said maybe people might miss the joke if we couldn't see your faces well i think i laughed more through this one than any of the previous cool so no video she doesn't care yeah still thought it was funny and that was land white so that might not be a she could be a he who knows yeah um yeah you should be like age sex whatever before you you know, so we know. So we know everything about you. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a joke. Okay, Laura. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing the long names anymore. Go ahead, Laura. Laura. A topic I'd love to hear about. How much do you think that dogs remember from their past? I such like as this their first year of life or so. I got I my dog this. from a shelter at a year old. She was a stray before that, and I wonder how much of that she remembers or impacts her behavior. I actually wondered the same thing when she read. That. I was like, that's yeah, an interesting question. I I, I do think that. And I thought about the answer when I read it. I don't, I don't, there's a lot of factors there. I think here's what I'm going to say to try to answer that question. And this is not a good advertisement for my board and train, but I'm going to say it anyway. When a dog first boards somewhere, say they lived with you, you go to work, but you come home every night or the dog stays, even if you're gone for a couple of days or not mm-hmm. that you'd be gone for a couple of days and leave your dog at your house, but like the dog stays at the house. It's never been anywhere. The first time your dog goes and boards somewhere for multiple days, including two weeks at our facility, if it's the first time they've gone anywhere, I'm pretty sure the dog goes, I live here now. I wish I didn't go back. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they like it or they're like, I kind of like my home, whatever their feelings are. I'm pretty sure that nine month old dog who comes to us, who has never been boarded, and is now with me for two weeks, goes, okay, Joel's my guy now, and Prince is my brother, and I live here now. Yeah, I'm 99% sure that's what they think, until they've gone through that week-long going somewhere, and the owner comes back. After that, they start to learn the people come back. But why the heck would they not, why would they not think they live there now if they have never gone anywhere and had the owner come back? So what a weird thing for a dog to come to me and go like, okay, I live here now. It's like your this the, is my the Joel Beckman where he goes, okay. Yeah. It's like a release thing. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I think so. That's how their brain works. They don't know. They don't know. So sorry, I cut you off. No, go ahead. So do they remember their past? They probably remember experiences. If they were born in a field in Riverside and you took them back to the field, the smell of the field would elicit a response. And they would go, I remember this. If they 
had a traumatic incident, then they had that traumatic incident in their new life. They, they, their emotions would be come up, but I don't know if they just remember. I used to live in a field till I was six months old. Hmm. I remember frolicking in the field. Like, I just don't think they remember that. I think there's, I remember emotions. I think they're at least with the, uh, memory part or the, the, I live here now thing is probably similar to like grandparents where, you know, cause like they love being around the other dogs and hanging out. It's a, I mean, it's totally stimulating for the dogs to be around all these other dogs and to like run around in a pool and stuff. Yes. So it's like, it's, it's grandparent how like oh, you, right. you know, you yell at your kid, you're like, Hey, eat your dinner. And then the grandparent takes your kid and is like, we're going on roller coasters. And then after yeah, that, yeah. we're going to eat ice cream. And then you're like, Hey, could you help us out here and not feed them ice cream every time? Because they like you more than they like us. Yes. No, that's true. But my my point was you don't feed them ice cream either. The dogs. thinking of when they go somewhere and they no that why part, wouldn't why wouldn't they be like okay this is my new life? Well, that part brought me to another idea or question, which is around, um, like the chronology. Don't you think that or the chronological order in right. which humans tend to think of things in chronological order, right? And when it's not in chronological order, we get confused, kind of like the Pulp Fiction um, movie. Right, from last week, yeah, gets real confusing. So, yeah, whereas, like, I don't think that dogs are that chronological. Like, I don't think they view the their past? life in well, like a well. When I was one, you know, oh yeah, definitely not. Like you're saying, it's more smell and scenario based. Yes, like oh, I remember we being are here. We are more smell and scenario based, I think, than we even or emotional based. We remember emotions. You remember how you felt about somebody more than anything. I wonder if like that ties into the people that like you have this visceral reaction. Like maybe that that woman reminded you of um, like a fourth grade teacher you had or something. And oh, you yeah. just like or it's a good point. What's cool about because we don't know the answer to your question. But what's great about what happened on this podcast is that now every what female is that is met you is thinking that you're talking about her oh what no you, you didn't post the video though no okay so then they oh they might still think yeah no i know i know it's a problem if i talked about about a client you're not talking like, bad about her you just said you had a but even even if you don't have a beef with her or any type of issue there's still times where you're like, we're not really doing good here, are we? Like, yeah, it's like totally. a job interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would do that in a job interview. interview. Here, here to change the subject yeah. a little bit. Um, people have asked me over the years, many times they go, do dogs understand time? And you know what I say to them? I hmm. go, do you understand time? Ooh, cold burn. Bro. Okay. Do dogs understand time? They ask. Then I go, well, explain time to me. You have to get into some crazy like bro, uh, like theory of you can't uh, you can't you probably you're a smart guy, smarter than the average person. You could probably explain time in a somewhat reasonable manner. Ninety percent of the population probably couldn't explain what time is. You time can't explain real. it. Time is time is a convention. Okay, so they there. So then I think dogs don't understand it. If it but maybe you're saying it's not actually that complicated. But do you know it's, so time is an actual convention. Do you know this term convention in the way you go somewhere it? and you listen to a speaker? No, 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 not that. That's another, <laughs> that's another, uh, that's like number two or whatever. So yeah, the convention is like, if you, I this is know. more philosophy. So if you this think about, good. uh, conventions, it's like, there's a lot of things that are a convention as an example, they're the, made up. The equator is a convention, right. right? It's an, it is, it's not real. It's an imaginary line. Right. That okay. separates the middle of the earth. Now so there's time. no real line. Right. And even the idea is real, but, but what it is, is it's like, I think the term for convention is it's like, it's basically something that we all agree on and we're like, this is a thing. And then that, that, but so, but time to me is there's, there's time as in uh past, present and future time. And then there's like the actual time, like years, right. months, days, whatever. Oh, that's true. So then there's these, there, and then there's like four o'clock which four o'clock is not real, right? Because it, it doesn't mean anything just the same way. Yeah. It's four o'clock, but then the next day it's like, okay, now we're doing the, you know, we're doing the, um, you know, fall back, spring forward. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever, I forgot what that was called. But anyways, the point is, is that it's, 
it's we all got together and decided that this is what the time should be right and th it does make sense why we have that but yeah it's more like your life and we can't explain time because it's like how do you explain your life yeah how do you how do you give a definition for someone's life i know so yeah no, i don't think to bring it back to dogs which we try to do on this podcast <laughs> we don't they don't un there's no way they understand time they may understand that's emotions from yesterday they may understand that there is a tomorrow like they're not gonna die but like do no, they even understand they, death no we don't even understand <laughs> death. do you understand death i mean nobody knows about death really and the only the people that i know but you know, do know, know that someone dies and then they stop moving and they're not and and, yeah. and if a dog saw another dog dead there would be this sort of thing that happens where they would understand but you that something know. can stop moving and is no longer has life. Do they know that's going to happen to them? Heck no. Do they know that they're going to go to heaven? Dogs? After? Yeah. Definitely not. I thought all dogs go to heaven. Is this true? Uh, no. <laughs> there, there, there could be dogs in heaven. But I, I heard a guy say that. But most pit bulls There's dogs go to in heaven, heaven, right? For sure. Yeah, I'd think so. Yeah. No? Okay. What okay. else? More. I got more for you. Okay. Uh, Sharon Weber. I'll give her a last name. Assuming it's a last name. Hi, Joel and Eric. Love the podcast you guys do. Miss the hands-on dog videos though. Anyway, keep up the good work. Thousand and more thanks for your great content. Can you imagine how many dogs have a better life because of you? Greetings from Switzerland. Ah, the Swiss. That's interesting, right? Yeah, miss the videos. They're still there, um, but that's fine. Mr. Dynamart. Love it, guys. Doesn't have to be all do all about dogs. I work God knows how many hours a week. Rush straight home to the family. Spend time walking the dog, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't get a chance to sit down with a couple of pals and just oh, yeah. have a laugh and I a chat. I know you're not my pals, but this feels like a chat with a couple of like-minded buddies, and I appreciate that. Keep them coming, Mister Dynamite, Dynamite, Dynamite. <laughs> you are a pal. You are a friend of mine. You're Mr. Dynamite from this point forward. Yeah, change your name. Hey, if you change your name from Mr. Dynamite to Dynamite, we'll, sh we'll, we'll shout you out again. Every, yeah. And I will tell everyone I meet, I will be like, it's my pal. Mr. Dynamite. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, it's cool. He thinks that's kind of what we're going for, I guess. Just hanging out, talking about animals. Apparently marriage, which we talked about today. I think it's all tied and together. a lot of dogs. Don't you think? Yeah. Or we're talking about how dogs sometimes don't like each other for certain reasons and then people and then it got into some other stuff. Because, But do you see this a lot with the dogs at your facility where it's like you can't exactly put your finger on why a certain dog is going at another dog. No. When you're like, what the Bro, hell? This dog came out today. I'll probably post the video. And it um, it thought Prince, Prince was the bee's knees. He, this dog thought Prince was the greatest thing it's ever met it met prince and they went into play bows and they were the best friends ever then every other dog that dog came out that came out the dog didn't go at it although it was, it was male or female dog female dog okay. and that that's part could be part of the reason it was like what's up dog like didn't care and then prince is just like oh my god you're the greatest freaking thing i've ever seen were they two intact dogs? i don't remember if she was intact but um that happens a lot and sometimes i have to go listen prince your dog loves Prince. We still got to be careful. And they're like, yeah, they, they agree. They go, yeah, that, that wasn't normal. What animals have like some type of weird, like fighting going on during mating? Otters. <laughs> That's impressive, right? You know, guys? He's, he's like otters. So you ever see sea otters? You ever see the, the females have um, white spots on their nose? Mm -hmm. They have all these like white spots. And you're like, what is that? Because the males bite their nose and do not nice things during mating season while holding onto their nose and biting them and scarring their noses up. It's not good. Ducks. Don't cats. Aren't cats pretty aggressive too? Well, if you ever seen lions do it, the male is like pretty ding worked up. He does not seem nice. The lion? Lion, yeah. How about house cats? I don't know. I don't, I've never seen house cats do it. I think I've seen some cat documentaries and I thought it was disturbing. I think cats might be a little, 
but otters are really bad. There's a lot of animals that are bad. I can't think of them. Otters just came to my mind because that nose thing I always thought was interesting. Do you know about like, um, do you know much about elk or moose or deer or anything like that? No. Are you interested in that at all? Uh, not so much. I did see that someone, I was watching a, a documentary on that recently, and I did see that they made your same point about they tend to get bigger as they go upward, up north, right? Animals is in general. In general. Do that. Isn't that interesting? I know. You um, think I'm talking, spewing a bunch of nonsense on this podcast. Well, I think the interesting thing with elk is that they like have like a, I think they call it a harem. Is that an appropriate word? Like they have a harem. I think of, it is. They call them cows. Appropriate. So it's like cow yeah. elk and they have them and they wrangle them. And then there'll be other bull, that bull is a bull elk. And they try to steal one another's yeah. harem. Yeah. And so a lot of times when they're hunting, they'll try to, um, they'll use a cow call to call in another bull because sometimes the bulls are greedy. And even if they have seven cows with them, they're like, well, let's get it. Let's get eight. For and so sure. they go in there, to, but then they corral them in a really weird way. And they wrote, they run around, you know, with this whole harem or whatever. Uh, I need to look up next. We, someone drop harem, in, harem. In, the, in the, uh, at the, yeah. Harem sea lions. It's like a stable, right? Sea lions have a harem. Um, but yeah, leave it, leave what the definition of a harem is in the comments. Uh, but then also the other way to do it is you use a bull call, right? So then you you send out the bull call. So then the bull thinks a bull is in the area. Yeah, that's and now the, he's like, whoa. Either one elicits a reaction. But you know what they can do? They can either run, charge right out the bull to go fight him. Or sometimes they try to <laughs> gather the harem and run off. Oh. They sneak away. They escape. Yeah, there's two tacks they could take yeah. to keep the ladies with yeah. them dude i saw a video the other day they weren't elk because it was in africa these two guys are fighting and i think their horns were locked up and then yeah. a leopard comes up <laughs> don't and, mind if i do like, yeah which is sad did he start biting him i don't i think him? the video cut off but i'm pretty i think the leopard got him they were locked up and running around and that's easy pickings but like can you imagine you're like locked up with another animal and then oh the leopard's getting that guy and i can't and i'm next like horrible yeah, there was that's um, nature. It's brutal. There was a, a really popular video on YouTube about two, I want to say either like mule deer or maybe it was white tail. I think it's mule deer because they have different, they have more like crazy um uh what do you call it? Antlers. And they were hooked together. Yeah. And so but one of them died. Yeah. So one of them was already dead, and then the other one was hooked to it. And so the guy went in there and he cut, I believe he cut the live ones. Right. Yeah. And they were saying, yeah. Um, but, but anyways, it was like, the reason was, be I think the reason that they had said is because it's like for their own protection, because these things are dangerous. And when they take off, they can like hurt you. Right. Yeah. Cause they're, they have a big, huge rack on yeah, their head. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was like, they saved the live one and cut it free. Yeah. And you know what happens in the comments? What? Everyone's got something smart to say about how they did it wrong. Did it wrong or shouldn't have done it? Shouldn't have done it. Or no, no, just that they should have, they'd cut the wrong one or whatever. And that they would, if they were doing it, they would have done it this way, you know? And you're like, come on, give the guy a break. Yeah. He got in there with like a saw, cut them free, saved his there, life. There's no breaks. And yeah, you're like, no, that's no, acceptable. No breaks, dude. It's like the muzzle on muzzle thing. Yeah. There's no breaks. Yeah. You can't do it. How, how do you think we did today? I think we did good. We did good. You, you're as we wind down here, you are not okay with us chopping it into pieces and moving it around. No, no, we can if you, if you, yeah, we, we can. I sure. personally don't care. I rather just, yeah, drop I it. I like to make things easy yeah. on you and me. True, especially me. And I yeah. think too, yeah, I just prefer to, if I were hearing it, I would actually want to hear the flow, the flow. And I think uh, we try to reduce the amount of interruptions as possible maybe some people could give us more ideas on topics, topics that Dude, they'd like to see they do that a lot in the yeah. comments <laughs> but we should sometimes we just blow by them a little bit no i read a lot there of was them. a good one but it's, yeah but the thing is some of it's like it needs to be like we both read them so then you're oh, okay that you'll kind of do one if you think you need to do it but i sometimes they're so complicated i think the the advice is like yeah keep the comments relatively 
Reader's Digest version, short to the point. Yeah. Uh, and then also like simple things, like some of the things about the dogs and how they, uh, do they remember and, and stuff like yeah. that. Those are things you can kind of tackle on the fly. Whereas, you know, what's the nature of life is. Oh yeah. Or different. time. Yeah. Time. That was an interesting one. Hey, it's our, it's our, uh, alarm. Oh, you hear that? We got to be done then. Cause yeah. that alarm annoys me. That means that it's time for some barbecue. Yeah. We're going to barbecue. Good deal, man. All right. Hey, it was fun. That was good. That was good stuff. All right, sir. Later, later, buddy. See you guys. Bye.